Welcome to New York. We are at Yankee Stadium at number three for a three game series. A quick road trip, just three games after the Blue Jays had a disastrous homestand against Baltimore and Boston, winning just one of the six games they played at home. Trying to get things turned around here on the road. John Gibbons Ball Club over the last 12 games, just three wins. They haven't pitched well, they haven't hit much, and the run differential tells you all you need to know. And Pat, they're just not getting clutch hits at all. Not at all. Hitting 167 runners in scoring position over their last 12 games. That comes out to about three runs a game that they're being outscored by. It's a team that has hit some home runs in the past, but they have to figure out ways to score runs without that. They're getting starting pitching at times. Marcus Stroman's last start was sensational. Jay Happ's thrown a couple of really good ones in a row. Uh, Marco Estrada the same way, but they have not as of yet been able to put everything together. Marcus Stroman will make his sixth start here at Yankee Stadium. Let's take a look at the Jays lineup. The Jays are 37 and 44. Top of the order, Jose Bautista against Masahiro Tanaka. The Yankees started tonight eight for 30 with three doubles, a home run, and four RBIs. He has always hit well against his Yankee ball club. And Steve Pierce, this season against the Yankees, he's done a nice job. He's five for seven. He's also hit well against Masahiro Tanaka with a couple of career home runs against the Yankee right-hander. So. They're looking to get things turned around. They need to score more runs to win ball games. Well, which Masahiro Tanaka is going to show up tonight? Uh, he makes his 17th start of the season, looking to continue a recent run of better pitching. Tanaka had a brutal stretch from May the 14th through June the 17th, a month with seven starts. He was 0-6 with an ERA of about nine, and the problem that he had that month is he gave up the home runs 15 home runs and 33 and a third innings. He's been better in his last two 14 innings combined two earned runs no home runs to Texas and the Chicago White Sox now for his career against the Blue Jays he's won seven games he's seven and three that's the most wins versus any opponent a 265 earned run average that's the lowest DRA versus any AL opponent. He's had 64 strikeouts. That's the most versus any opponent. So Blue Jays in tough again tonight against Tanaka. Defensively, the Yankees have Frazier Gardner and Judge in the outfit. Gregorius Torres up the middle. Gary Sanchez back behind the plate. His 43rd start this season catching Masahiro Tanaka. This is the latest phenom, if you will, for the New York Yankees. Clint Frazier will get his first look at Yankee Stadium. Third big league game. He opened up his major league career down in Houston with a home run. He gets his first look at that expanse of left field here in New York. He was out early today, but you and I saw him with Robbie Thompson going over how to play this massive left field here at Yankee Stadium. Yeah, there's a lot of ground to cover. He is very athletic. He's got a lot of good speed, but boy, he's got his hands full. His first game in that spacious left field here at Yankee Stadium. Tanaka has completed his warm ups. Bautista has stepped in the batter's box. We are just about ready to start. First of a short three game road trip here in New York. Tanaka is set. Here's the first pitch of the ball game. A slider down and away, and we are underway. New York has won four of the seven ball games these two clubs have played so far but the Blue Jays they've owned this series over the last couple of years 25 and 13 that's their record over the last two seasons coming into this 17 season there's a base hit for Bautista and right off the bat Clint Frazier gets a play in left field. Bautista Jose has been doing a great job at the top of that lineup get used to a lot of breaking balls from Tanaka but the minute he throws a fastball look at this one up over the middle of the plate and Jose doesn't miss it. Looked like he had a shot for extra bases into the corner but Frazier cut it off so it's a leadoff single for Bautista. A bit different lineup for the Blue Jays tonight. Donaldson is hitting second but then Justin Smoke will bat third behind him. More Smoke he's hitting third for the first time this season. Eight homers 20 driven in for Donaldson but he's going through a rough patch right now. One for his last 20. Of course, after that first pitch off the plate. Lots of off speed pitches from Tanaka. He got a little bit of everything. He was getting hurt when he was elevating his fastball. You mentioned the home runs over that stretch, middle of May to the middle of June. Hasn't given one up over his last couple of starts, throwing a little bit better. Outside, ball in the strike to Donaldson. 
Tanaka's in his fourth season as Pat mentioned he has pitched well against the Blue Jays in his career seven and three. But the key to his success especially against the Blue Jays is keeping the ball in the ballpark. When he doesn't allow a home run he's four and one in six career starts against the Blue Jays. Boy, another breaking ball. He gives you a wide assortment of breaking pitches. Yeah, yeah. Get ready for a lot of off-speed pitches. He's had success against the Blue Jays when he's able to keep that ball down, splitter diving out of the strike zone. What the Blue Jays are going to have to do is make sure they get that ball up. It's a really good splitter. He picks up the majority of his strikeouts with that split. Hitters have to be disciplined enough to lay off of the one that's low. One and two to Donaldson. He swings and misses. Tanaka picks up his first strikeout of the ball game. That was the perfect example. Of what I was just talking about is a breaking ball out of the strike zone, low. Not much you can do with that, even if you you got a hold of it. Sanchez with the glove down low, the pitch down underneath the knees of Donaldson, but Josh swings over the top of it. One away for Justin Smoke. First time All Star. Smoke will start at first base for the American League. Goes after the first pitch, another pitch out of the strike zone. You really got to make Tanaka throw the ball in the strike zone if you're going to have any chance at all of hitting him. If you see it out of his hand and it's going to be low. Chances are that with the break that he has on it, it's going to break underneath the knees and it's going to be low. What you're going to look for is that pitch middle in and up. And as it breaks, it's going to end up about thigh high. Ground ball. This could be two. Shovel to Gregorius. He does a 360 and throws smoke out at first. So a leadoff single by Bautista is erased on the double play. Tanaka faces the minimum top of the first. Manager of the New York Yankees. He started in 2008. He's one of six franchise managers for New York to manage at least parts of 10 different seasons. And his Yankees are six games over 500, second in the AL East. Top of the order is Brett Gardner. He's got good numbers against the Blue Jays starting tonight. Marcus Stroman. A double couple of home runs and five RBIs. And right behind him, first time All Star Aaron Judge. He has worn out the Blue Jays. They have contributed. To his first All Star game by those numbers, 385 average, 10 for 26, including four home runs against the Blue Jays. Marcus Stroman will take the ball tonight for the Blue Jays. He's been the Blue Jays' most consistent starter this season. Atasta career high, 119 pitches during his last outing. That was against the Orioles. Couldn't pitch any better than what he did. His fastball was spot on. His slider had sharp break to it. Won his eighth game of the season to go along with that 341 earned run average. Looking for a little bit of redemption against the Yankees. He only lasted three innings the last time he pitched in this ballpark. 
Home runs have been a problem for Marcus in this ballpark coming into this game 22 and two thirds innings against the Yankees here and he's given up five home runs. I don't think Brett Gardner liked that first pitch strike called by the home plate umpire Jerry Meals. Second pitch looks like same the same pitch. pitch maybe even better. What happened there is is Marcus has done an outstanding job this year of varying his deliveries to the plate with nobody on that time he looked like he quick pitched him just a little bit and caught Gardner by surprise so Brett calls time so he gets ready. That's the pitch right there that was so good for him last time out against the Orioles that breaking ball to the first pace first base side of home plate sharp breaking ball and had a lot of late break to it just sweeping it across the the plate really the Orioles had no chance against them. Little tapper out in front of home Bailey quickly out behind the plate makes the play. Two three on the put out and one away. Let's take a look at the rest of the Blue Jays defensively. It's Pierce Carrera and Bautista in the outfield. Going starts at shortstop in the place of Troy Tulowitzki. Luke Maley making his 29th start behind the plate. Blue Jays are electing to rest Martin Tulowitzki and Pilar. So Ezekiel Carrera will get his third start in center field. And just like left field, we talked about Frazier's first start out in the outfield here in left field. Carrera gets the start in center field. He's going to have to be the captain. There is a lot of room out there. He's going to have to be vocal in the outfield. Here is Aaron Judge who takes the first pitch fastball for a strike. Judge this year, as we mentioned, batting 385 against the Blue Jays. There's a double and four home runs. I love this little subtle change to the batting order that Joe Girardi has put in tonight for the Yankees. He's been getting walked so much this year Aaron Judge so he wanted to put a hitter behind him so put another all star behind him. Base hit to right. Ground ball but it finds a hole on the right side Aaron Judge with a one out single to right. You know, if you're going to elect not to pitch to Aaron Judge, you're going to have to pitch to Gary Sanchez. Well, Judge was walked in the White Sox series in Chicago in a one run game with nobody on, and they put him on, and they got D.D. Gregorius out to end the inning. Yeah, they had Gregorius hitting behind him tonight. They elevated him into the two hole, and they've got Gary Sanchez now, another big power hitter, hitting behind him. Uh, Judge is hitting in this two spot for the fourth time in the last six games. Here is Gary Sanchez. Impressive numbers. He too is a first time All Star. 13 home runs, 40 RBIs. Uh, Strowman, we mentioned, he gets more ground balls than anybody. Half of the outs that he has recorded this season have come on the ground. He himself has started five double plays. Well, that was a funky swing and that's a nasty breaking ball. Yeah. It was so good last time out against the Orioles. Looks like he's carried it into the early part of this game. Hitting that outside corner tough on right handers. Looks like a fastball Sanchez has fastball on his mind and then tries to hold up 12 ground ball outs in that game against the Orioles last time. As a base hit to right, Judge making the turn around second. He's headed for third. Bautista gets it back in the Barney. And it's first and third. A couple of All Stars doing their thing, playing in their first game since becoming an All Star. And the Judge's Chambers out there in right. <laughs> All rise as he goes first to third. He showed him that slider early in the count, and now Sanchez cuts his swing down. And instead of trying to pull it, just lofts it over Smoke's head into right field softly. As Judge reads, reads that ball, that it's into the outfield, and he's going to make it to third base without a throw. It's a good adjustment, I thought, by Gary Sanchez at the plate against Marcus's hard slider. Here is D.D. Gregorius batting cleanup tonight. Boy, so many managers around baseball have just pushed their lineups up now. You got 
The leading home run hitter in the American League batting second in the lineup. The Blue Jays have a former MVP batting second in their lineup. Things have really changed over the last few years yeah. as to how managers construct their lineups. And they're only all star hit third tonight. Part of the problem for the Yankees is they've had so many injuries. You know they're missing Matt Holliday who had a great series against the Blue Jays back in Toronto. Aaron Hicks is on the disabled list. He had a great series against the Blue Jays and no Starling Castro tonight earlier they lost Greg Bird Dustin Fowler it's a sad story he came up and played one inning and he had an injury and he's lost for the season ruptured his patella tendon Stroman behind Gregory is three and oh and you can't lay one in there he's got some pop Didi has ten home runs four pitch walk that'll load the bases Well something has to give in this three game series. The Blue Jays just lost five of six in their homestand and the Yankees have lost 14 of their last 19 games. It all started for the Yankees when they went out west six games they came back bagel didn't win a game out there. And they've been fat fighting some injuries and they just got back from Houston last night from that series. Lost two out of three in Houston. This is Chase Headley, the third baseman. He takes a strike. That Yankee slump started on the 12th of June, and since that date, they've lost seven games to the Boston Red Sox in the standings. Misses inside a ball on the strike. You saw Headley with four career grand slams. The Yankees had grand slams in back to back games in Houston. Gardner hit one on Friday. D.D. Gregorius hit a grand slam on Saturday. They've also had grand slams by Ellsbury and Judge this season. One and two now. I tell you, one approach at the plate against Marcus Stroman is not to try and force a walk or take pitches when his stuff is this good. I think you have to go up there and you have to be aggressive. Especially with runners in scoring position. Hit him. And that's going to bring the first run of the ball game in. Judge comes in to score. And Headley will pick up a painful RBI. He was going for the strikeout, trying to slip that slider right underneath the left hander's bat. But overthrew it just a little bit and it hit it looked like it hit him right on that shin guard for an RBI. You can see Maley moves to the inside part of the plate, give it to me down here, and yeah, it hits him right in that shin guard, so that doesn't hurt as bad as we thought initially. 33 RBIs now for Headley. The bases remain loaded. Kobe Ellsbury just back from the disabled list. Ellsbury is 29 games. With a concussion. Blue Jays didn't see him in that series. Back at Rogers Center. 0 for 4 on Sunday. Yesterday he snapped that 14 game hit streak he had. His third longest hit streak since the start of 2012. Another inside pitch misses. Yankees are a lot like the Boston Red Sox in terms of taking their pitches working the count you can see Ellsbury's had his problems in his career versus Marcus. But you can see how patient they are working the counts. Stroman thought that last pitch caught the bottom of the strike zone but he didn't get to call it's two balls that are striked Ellsbury. Sanchez at third, Gregorius at second, and Headley at first. A run in here. Ellsbury checking with Jerry Mias as to the location of that last strike. <laughs> one of those had to be a strike, either that one or the previous pitch. Marcus has been all around the plate, all over it in this at bat. You can see that from pitch cast. Missed that one inside, and we mentioned how effective he was to the first 
Bay side of home plate against the Orioles right now. He's just off a tick. Carlos Torres is on deck. Full count, one out. The Yankees have taken a one nothing lead here in the bottom of the first. Too close to take. Good pitch. Three twenty five with the bases loaded including a grand slam for Ellsbury. Boy, Blue Jays are desperate for one of those Stroman yeah. ground balls. Yeah, give me one of those Adam balls, like right at the second baseman. A walk. So a hit batter with the bases loaded. Now a bases loaded walk, and the Yankees have taken a two nothing lead. This is the sixth career start for Stroman here at Yankee Stadium. He grew up about 56 miles. East of Yankee Stadium, out on Long Island in Medford, Long Island, New York. At Toronto, no problem when he pitches against the Yankees, but it's a different story in this ballpark. Yeah, for some reason, right here, the whip. Look, look at the whip. Almost two base runners an inning allowed, and then of course the home runs. You always have to figure the home runs in this ballpark because of that short right field wall. An ERA of five and a half. Last time he pitched here was at the beginning of May, and Marcus only lasted three innings, gave up six hits, and five earned runs. He also had three walks in those three innings and a couple of home runs. He was removed after three innings with shoulder tightness in that ball game. Here is Ronald Torres. He had 318 on that most recent road trip. Seven for 22 goes after the first pitch. Torres picked up his first career walk off hit with a two out single in the 10th inning of that win down in Texas on the 23rd of June. He's not trying to do too much with the ball. He's trying to punch it back through the middle or punch it over to right field. Ground ball. Barney to Goins for one back to first double play. That's the double play Strowman was looking for, but the Yankees. Scored two runs on two hits, a hit batter, and a walk, and take an early 2 0 lead. today the centerpiece Miguel Montero who is not yet with the ball club flying from Phoenix to New York he is going to rejoin the team tomorrow of course it was a rocky road for Montero in Chicago got into a verbal spat with Jake Arrieta Anthony Rizzo weighed in and ultimately he was DFA'd I asked John Gibbons do you have to have a conversation with your new catcher when he comes in and Gibbons told me no I don't have anything to say he spoke his mind that's his business Joe Smith was with that World Series team last year in Chicago he raved about Montero Smith said quote he's a gamer he wants to win and man is he funny of course Montero was clutch to game one of the NLCS last fall bottom eight game one this grand slam into the Chicago night that was the first blow of the series it was given to admitted we can definitely use another left handed bat they'll get that tomorrow when Miguel Montero comes into the fold likely meaning Luke Maley will be sent down guys. Yeah, Montero he was just upset because he didn't get to play much and I think that was the biggest thing he had that incident Arash referred to was a game in which the Nationals stole seven bases 
with Jake Arietta on the mound why Montero was catching. And after the game, Arietta made a statement, man, my pitchers don't do me any help at all. I'm not getting any opportunities to throw these guys out. And it went back and forth, and everybody kind of took exception to it. Montero talked to Jake Arietta about it. Right. And he said, hey, we're cool with this. He said, yeah. But when you look at the numbers, Montero hasn't thrown out a base runner against 31 stolen bases. So he has not thrown the ball well, but he's kind of an offensive minded catcher. He's 33 years old. He's got 124 career hits, had some big years in Arizona. He's a two time All Star. So you get an offensive player, left handed bat, something might spark the offense a bit. Henrys Morales gets that nasty splitter, and he was aware he was going to get a lot of splitters from Tanaka. Yeah, we had a talk with him today about Tanaka and what to expect, and he said he's going to see a lot of breaking balls. He knows that. He says, I'll get a, a fastball, maybe one fastball per at bat. There's the split grip and the movement, but he's expecting a lot of off speed pitches, and he gets one right there. Second strike out of the night for Tanaka. This is Steve Pierce facing Masahiro Tanaka. Another breaking ball. You don't get many fastballs from Tanaka. No, not, not at all. And he's it, the first inning's always been his roughest inning. This year, his ERA in the first inning is nine. But he got through that one on that double play ball the first inning tonight. What you don't want him to do is start to get comfortable with all those off-speed pitches. That's when he pitches deep into ball games. Doesn't give you much to hit. Tanaka's had a real roller coaster season. As Pat mentioned, he had that real rough start where he went 0 6 over the span of seven starts. Early in the season, from April 14th to the 8th of May, he was 5 0 with a very good ERA. He won five straight decisions. There's another splitter. This one bounces on the plate. Yeah, his season got off to a tough start. Remember, he made the first start against Tampa Bay and only lasted two and two thirds innings. Eight hits and seven earned runs then went on a nice little streak like you were talking about and then fell back into it again. For about six starts. That'll cut it right on the outside corner. During those five wins he beat St. Louis. The White Sox beat the Red Sox at Fenway and then beat the Blue Jays and the Reds right here in Yankee Stadium five straight wins. But then it just turned south on him in a hurry. Looks like more of a curveball there and he gets Pierce back to back strikeouts here in the second. Well if you are a hitter against Masahiro Tanaka you are liable to get anything at any time fastball he throws it just twenty nine percent of the time and then here comes all the breaking stuff slider twenty eight percent. Splitter 26% of the time. He can cut the ball. We just saw it look like it might have been a slower curveball to Steve Pierce to pick up the strikeout. I guess the best way that you can attack Tanaka is just look for the baseball and look for it out over the plate. Ezekiel Carrera getting the start in center field is batting six tonight. And there's that breaking ball in there for a strike 76 79 miles an hour. That's a curveball slow curveball. Do you see how aware Tanaka was there when Carrera came up alerting everybody in the infield that he might bunt. And the splitter a very defensive swing from Carrera. OK Mr. Tabler put yourself in the batter's box against Masahiro Tanaka. What would your approach be. I would get up on the plate and get a little bit closer towards the pitcher to try and take away the curveball, the cutter, and the splitter. That, that would be the first thing. I, I'd change my approach where I stand in the batter's box. Next thing I would do is I would force myself to make him get the ball up. If I see anything that starts out of his hand down, I'm going to let it go. He's the kind of pitcher where you can't be too aggressive against. I mean, he wants you to be aggressive and swing at all of his stuff. There's that curveball again at 79 miles an hour. And, you know, I make a great point. If you get up in the batter's box, you have a chance to hit the splitter and the breaking ball before it gets out of the strike zone, before it breaks below the strike zone. 
And that's where he lives. That's where he has his big strikeout games. That's where he's had a lot of success, at least the games that we have seen him pitch against the Blue Jays. And remember, seven wins against the Blue Jays. That's the most wins versus any opponent. That looked like a cutter, 86 miles an hour. He's going to throw you so many different velocities, but he doesn't have the type of command we saw with Chris Sale on Saturday, where Sale was throwing strikes in the zone at different speeds, different pitches all afternoon. But Tanaka will bounce balls in the dirt. He'll elevate ball from time to time. He doesn't have that same type of pinpoint location we saw from Sale. Sale had different angles, too, of that ball coming in there and different velocities. Liner into center field and Gardner can't make the sliding catch. He got a glove on it, but just couldn't make the play. So Carrera has a two out single, keeps the inning alive. Batting seven is the second baseman, number 18. Gardner has played center field in the past, but not a lot this year. Clint Frazier now up, so Gardner has shifted over to center field with Ellsbury. When he was on the DL and Hicks Hicks was playing a lot of center field when the Blue Jays saw the Yankees earlier almost a shoestring catch for Gardner he goes down and it's right off the end of his glove. Just the second start of the season for Brett Gardner in center field. Darwin Barney the batter. He takes a strike. Gardner was the everyday center fielder before Jacoby Ellsbury signed here in 2012. Yeah, it's not foreign to him in this ballpark. He got a good break on that ball. It looked like he had a chance, an excellent chance of of catching it. Oh, and one to Darwin Barney. Popped up on the infield. Ronald Torres, the second baseman, calls for it. That'll end the inning, so the Blue Jays get a two out single, leave a base runner. They go to the bottom of the second in New York. The Yankees have a two nothing lead. baseball dreams campaign Rogers made Sarah Nixon Suggett's dream come true by sending her and her entire family on the road trip here to New York to cheer on the Blue Jays tonight. What a time they're having at Yankee Stadium. See what other baseball dreams are coming true this summer at RogersCelebrates.com. What a great trip for a family to come here to New York and enjoy the Blue Jays and Yankees here in this gorgeous ballpark. Says Chris Carter, the first baseman, batting in the eighth spot. Stroman gets the first pitch in there for a strike. Yankees scored two runs on two hits, a hit batter with the bases loaded, and a bases loaded walk. 
producing the two runs. Chris Carter gets the at bat tonight here in the second inning. He was out here early taking some extra batting practice. It looked like he was trying to stay on the ball and hit the ball to right field. The Yankees have 33 RBIs from their first baseman this year. They were counting heavily on this guy when they signed him to drive in some runs and hit some home runs. Dustin Smoke has 52 RBIs himself. Carter was actually designated for assignment by the Yankees after the game on June 23rd. He went down to Triple A Scranton on the 28th. He did not play, and then they got him back up here. Reacquired. Fastball hit to center, and that is a graveyard out there, deep center field. So now that'll bring up Clint Frazier, who made his major league debut on Saturday, and this will be his first big league at bat in Yankee Stadium. It's got to be a thrill for him. Frazier was acquired from Cleveland in the Andrew Miller trade on the 31st of July last year. Former first round pick of Cleveland in 2013. Fifth overall pick out of high school in Georgia. He was the Gatorade National Player of the Year. As a senior in high school, he hit 485 with 17 home runs. Hit a home run in his first game. He also had a double in that first big league game. It's this ball to left field, but Pierce is there. Two fly ball outs here in the second. Frazier, another part of that young rebuilding effort. But they're winning while they're rebuilding on the fly. They've got a core of good professional players in the mid 20s to 30s, and now Joe Girardi's been seeing a steady stream of young players come up to complement this team. They do 16 rookies this season, which he really didn't want to have to do, but it's out of necessity because of the injuries to so many of their pitchers and so many of their everyday players. The plan was for Frazier to spend the whole season down in the minor leagues. Back to the top of the order, Brett Gardner. Gardner. Tapped out to the catcher, little dribbler out in front of home plate, and Luke Bailey threw him out his first time up. Tell you, I'd like him to get this guy right here. Reason you got that big guy sitting on deck, I'd rather him come up leading off an inning than with anybody on base. And there is the big guy, Aaron Judge, had a ground ball base hit through the right side of the infield, came around to score the first run for the Yankees. Stroman came back with that same slide. He didn't get to call on the previous pitch. It looked like a good pitch. And you can see those two pitches on the outside. One a ball, one a strike. Hmm. Two balls and a strike to Brett Gardner. That's another good pitch. You can see Stroman slumping his shoulders. And man, I got to have that pitch. It looks like three strikes and he's yeah. only had one called strike. Yeah, he's he's all around the plate. Don't let that bother you. I just don't know how Gardner is able to lay off that pitch. Can't hit it. Don't swing it. I guess. I guess that's <laughs> his game plan. Ground ball. Goins at short. Takes his time and that's a quick inning for Marcus Stroman. Three up three down. We'll go to the third. Blue Jays trail by two. It'll be Goins, Maley and Bautista when we come back.
MBJ3582 to earn my Blue Jays points just for watching the broadcast. The entry box can be found on your My Blue Jays homepage. Code must be entered by 4 a.m. and you can look for a new code tomorrow. Fuck. Thank you very much, Rash. A lot of Blue Jays fans on hand here at Yankee Stadium. This is the eve of the 4th of July. Of course, the Canada Day celebration on Saturday was terrific in the Blue Jays. You can see the socks that Ryan Goins is sporting. We saw the Red Sox wearing those red, white, and blue stars and stripes socks. Cat in a hat, right? I, I, you know, I saw it the <laughs> other day, and I was like, "What's going on with the Red Sox?" You know, I, I couldn't put two and two together. Blue Jays weren't wearing it. I was thinking more of uh, Wizard of Oz. <laughs> <laughs> You know what the stripes. Yeah. Little bouncing ball foul. It's 0 and 2. You know Tanaka is a very established pitcher. So no question about that. But boy his numbers are dramatically different when he pitches ahead compared to when he pitches from behind. He has the largest gap in the American League in slugging percentage. Between pitching ahead and pitching behind. It's a 642 point difference. When he pitches ahead, the league slugs just 269 against him. When he's behind, it's 911. That's the biggest gap in the majors. You know, you can say that about everybody, especially a guy with all these toys that he has to play with, if you will, ways to get you out. He's not going to blow the ball by you, he's going to have to trick you. 911. Slugging percentage when he falls behind hitters. Two balls and two strikes. Carter knocks it down. He'll flip to Tanaka and Goins is retired. 3 1 on the put out. Get fired up for summer with the new Broil King barbecue from Home Hardware. Here's how. Beautiful Yankee Stadium. This is Yankee Stadium 3, if you will, on a different site from the first two stadiums across the street. You got to play in Yankee Stadium 1, didn't you? And 2. 1 and 2. I did. This one's a different ballpark for sure. It doesn't have the steel girders or the spacious playing surface. But it's nice. But they brought everything else over with them. Monuments. What they really did was they enhanced the experience for the fans. Mm -hmm. There's no question about it. the concourses are wide. When they built the original Yankee Stadium, it was all about getting the people inside the stadium so they could watch the game. Now there are restaurants and stadium clubs and all kinds of fan party decks. It's a true experience when you come to any ballpark that matter. Blue Jays have the West Jet Vice deck in center field. That's been a big destination. You can see the Yankees have similar areas here in this ballpark. And now they have the judges chambers <laughs> out in right field which is very clever. There it is. Today they had a special promotion they opened up the gates an hour ahead of the normal opening time for the stadium so the people could have kind of a block party here this evening. Bailey hits it into the seats and, and the purpose of that was to get them out so they could see the Yankees taking batting practice. It's the eve of the 4th of July. And while they did that the first 2017 fans coming into the ballpark got a voucher for two tickets for a future game here at Yankee Stadium. Plus they picked out the crowd that gets to seat in the judges chambers tonight. <laughs> Bailey waves at that breaking ball off the plate another strikeout for Tanaka four strikeouts first time through the order for Tanaka. He wants to expand that strike zone when he gets ahead of you. You were just mentioning about getting ahead or falling behind. With two strikes, look how look how he expands the strike zone. It looks like it's going to be there, and then it's out for another strikeout. So Jose Bautista will bat with two outs. Bautista is tied with Evan Longoria for the most home runs by an active player against the Yankees. 
Bautista and Longoria have both hit 34 career home runs against New York. The difference for Bautista is he has hit those 34 home runs in 413 at bats. Longoria's at bats 583. Now Bautista really enjoys hitting against the Yankees. The only club he's hit more home runs against. We just saw them over the weekend, the Boston Red Sox. Yeah, he loves to step to the plate on the big stage, and there isn't a bigger stage than Yankee Stadium against the New York Yankees. Always seems to come up big here. He has hit 18 home runs in this stadium. His biggest year was 2014 when he pounded out eight home runs in 53 at bats. A lot of big home runs wow. against the Yanks. Here's a count where Tanaka is behind two and one. Let's see what he does here. Some of the other players on that list you were just mentioning Longoria second Chris Davis is on that list with twenty nine Adam Jones and of course Edwin Encarnacion. That one always seems to seem to come up big here with the Blue Jays. Edwin has twenty one career home runs against the Yankees and Bautista lays off that pitch. Look at all those pitches. Not a one of them in the strike zone, and if you can do that as a hitter, that's your best chance for success. Yeah, yeah. Make him get it up. He's throwing it down there for a reason. If you keep swinging at it, he's going to keep throwing it down there. Jose's got that discipline where he just lays off of it. Ball four. Bautista takes another walk. Tanaka looks a little bit. Curious as to why that wasn't a strike, but he didn't get to call. Bautista with the walk. Well, it's another small strike, so like we saw the other night, you're going to have to get that ball into that strike zone tonight for anybody to offer at it. So a two out walk to Bautista now. Josh Donaldson will step in. Donaldson, a strikeout victim his first time up. Force him into the strike zone. Yeah. yeah. The Yankees are doing it to Marcus Stroman. Now the Blue Jays have to do that to Tanaka. Stay patient. Borderline strike away. Donaldson fouls it off. One and one now. Kevin Pawar not starting tonight. Blue Jays have a day game tomorrow, and it sounds like CC Sabathia is going to come off the disabled list and pitch that game. So a lefty tomorrow against the Blue Jays. Pilar, Tulowitzki, and Martin should all be in there tomorrow. Pilar has played 77 games in center field this season. Donaldson, a big swing and a miss. It's one and two now. Tanaka signed a seven year contract on January 22nd 2014 that takes him through 2020 but he has an opt out at the end of this season if he chooses to opt out of the contract. One and two two outs Bautista will dive back in the first. I don't know that you should expect Tanaka to opt out of his contract. Well I, I was just thinking about that. Uh, he's younger than we think. You know we. He's been around a long time. He's 28 years old. 28. So. If he opts out out of this one. He would begin a new contract. In his 29. Year 29 season. But he's making 22 million a year. <laughs> I'm not opting mm -hmm. out. One and two to Donaldson. In the dirt. Yeah, he's got three more seasons after this one at 22, 22, and 23 million. I'd hate, to, I'd hate to roll the dice and say yeah. I'm going to get that on the open market. You know, there are concerns about his elbow. There's back that right. he's got a 
torn ligament in his elbow and he's been able to pitch through it he has opted just to rehab it and continue to pitch and you know there are times when it looks like he might be dealing with problems but his velocity has been up his last couple of starts. Two and two. Now it's a full count. Look at the difference in these at bats how patient they've been. They know that he's going to be just throwing that splitter throwing that slider. He's a pitch away from working himself into some danger. The smoke on deck Bautista will be running on the pitch. Yankees have a two nothing lead. There goes the runner hit on a one hop to Headley. Long throw across the diamond and that'll do it. Bautista gets a two out walk the Blue Jays have stranded a pair Aaron Judge will lead things off for the Yankees he has already singled and scored tonight. Next Tuesday down in Miami, and you look at his numbers, and you can see not only is he an All Star, but he's certainly on pace to be the American League MVP. Well, if the season ended today, he'd be the Triple Crown winner and probably the MVP. First in average home runs, RBIs, runs, OPS in the American League, and on top of that, he's a great guy. He always has times for the fans to sign autographs, take pictures. He knows how important. This part of the game is that the fans want to come out and see him, so he's always ready to be there for him signing autographs. You know, he comes from a very small town in central California, Linden, California, about 1,500 people. It's just outside of Sacramento. And he is very at ease in the Big Apple. There's no question about it. And he understands his importance to the fan base here in New York. You know, I don't want to throw anything on a young player who is just starting his career, but he's he's going to make his first all star game and he led the American League in voting about four and a half million votes from the fans all around baseball. First Yankee to lead the A on all star voting since Derek Jeter in 2009. Can we make that comparison yet or is it too early. Well you know what I mean it's really unfair to make that comparison right. but. It's you there can see they're coming far and wide to see Aaron Judge hit a home run. There's that good slider and he strikes out. Stroman got that slider to a good spot that's the first strikeout for Marcus tonight. Aaron Judge isn't the only young budding star on this Yankee team there's a whole core of good players you look at the ages of some of these baby bombers and Frazier's just 22 he was supposed to spend the rest of the season in triple A but he's up here out of necessity Severino he's an all star he is just 23 Jordan Montgomery we saw him in spring training he's really played well this year he's a pitcher Sanchez and judge but they're all under 25 and they're all homegrown Bouncing ball big second hop for Goins. Sanchez is retired. Frazier was a draft pick of Cleveland but traded here but he has spent some time in the minor league so they are cultivating something special here in New York down in that minor leagues and they're holding on to their players now instead of trading them off for veteran players to help them win they're keeping all these young players 
and there's plenty more to come. Last time they did that was 1995 when they had a bunch of players they called the core four which was actually five players. Mm -hmm. You count Bernie Williams in that. Andy Bennett Jorge Posada Derek Jeter Mariano Rivera. And that's how you win championships over the long haul. You develop your own players. They learn how to win together and they'll fight for each other under the hard times. D.D. Gregorius he took over for Derek Jeter. Looked like it was going to be a tough challenge for him and boy has he settled in and I think everybody's very pleased with what D.D. Gregorius has done. There was a lot of pressure put on him trying to take over for Derek Jeter like he was going to be the guy for a while and then what's well, going to be the guy after the guy. For Gregorius, he has a chance to go to the All Star game. He's in the final vote. That won't be known for a few days, but Gregorius has a chance to be the sixth Yankee to go to Miami. Came into this game batting 310 with 10 home runs and 36 RBIs. Now, that was a little curious right there. Jerry Mills granted timeout, and Stroman had already begun his. Delivery look mainly saying what happened there Jerry and and D.D. Gregorius telling Stroman it was the umpire who called time Marcus gave it one of those hesitations again it totally legal changing up his delivery with nobody on base. Gregorius slaps it foul down the left side. Yeah and D.D. made a point of saying hey Marcus that's not on me. Mm hmm. Because there have been controversies, and Marcus was called for a balk in a similar situation. Not a, he was. It was actually ball a four. Ball four, and that was in Anaheim, mm -hmm. and it was a strange situation. You see, John Gibbons is still a little bit baffled by how that happened. That ball hit Gregorius as it bounced off home plate. If the umpire and the batter are not set, and the pitch is on the way, the umpire can call quick pitch. And can call the pitch a ball. The one you're referencing was a three ball count in Los Angeles that was eventually called ball four. And if memory serves, it was Cole Calhoun who was the batter. And breaking ball down and in. I, I think Marcus's hesitation move, we're going to call it. Was a little perplexing to the home plate umpire. Didn't know what to make of it. So he just called time. Oh, nice play by Goins on the short hop. Good inning for Marcus Stroman. Three up, three down. It gets Judge Sanchez and Gregorius in order. We'll go to the fourth. Blue Jays trail by two. Carolina he goes fishing loves to get the grill going for cookouts lay low little noise family around a few friends the opposite of course is happening next week for the Blue Jays first baseman headed to Miami for the All Star game in Hoopla and South Beach and his wife Kristen will be in charge of the guest list for it Justin told me today honestly we're going to cherish this the rest of our lives and smoke did ask me to pass along his gratitude to those watching to those who filled out a ballot. That's the biggest thing he said. Thanks for the votes. I'm excited to be there, represent the Blue Jays, and represent Canada. The good news, too, he'll get a day at home in South Carolina when the All Star Madness is over. So the fish and the barbecue grills, Buck, they should beware.
<laughs> Absolutely, he'll wear that barbecue out. You can bet on that as the All-Star break now is four days long. So congratulations to Justin Smoke. And you had a chance to talk to him about this great accomplishment in his first half of the season and what it means to him after eight years in the big leagues. Yeah, he was talking about uh, some of the changes that he has made in his swing. And, and one of the things that he did, he said, for years I was fighting my right handed swing and my left handed swing. That he was always trying to copy, saying, well, the left is not like the right, and the right is not like the left. And he was trying to marry them together and said, you know what? Forget about that. I've got two distinctly different swing one left hand where I lift the ball just a little bit more he said my right handed swing is more of a natural swing that's what I started I started as a right handed hitter and a left handed thrower and it wasn't until I was 12 years old that I started switch hitting hit a home run as a 12 year old and said eh, OK but he didn't take switch hitting seriously until after his freshman year in high school he had a home run in the summer of his between his freshman and sophomore year he said on a college ballpark and he said I can switch it I can do this and, and that's when it started for him and it's just evolved a different swing his lefties is a little bit different than his right and he's OK with that now. It certainly has worked for him this season and I thought it was really interesting and after you had that conversation with Justin Smoke we had the same conversation with Kendris Morales and their stories are very similar except Morales recognized he has two distinct yeah. swings and wants to respect them both not trying to change either one of his two swings Smokey was trying to marry his two together to be the exact same Morales says hey well, from the right side I got my hands lower from the left side I'm a, I'm a little bit higher Justin went around and he talked to some of the players in the major leagues who are switch hitters like Mark to share and he asked him or do you have the same type of swing he said no my right handed swings a lot different than my left he said he talked to Beltron and Beltron's said mine are about the same but you don't have to be like that you, you, you have two different swings you can see Morales his hands are a little bit higher when he comes to the plate a little bit higher so if you put that away I think like Justin has he's put that away this year he's more at ease with himself. I can't possibly imagine being a switch hitter and having two bad swings to worry about. <laughs> he he goes up there he gets the majority of his swings from the left side because you face so many different right handed batters or pitchers batting right handed he said it's my natural position. My natural swing is from the right side that's where I started. He said uh, he did everything right handed as a kid swings the golf club everything was right hand and one day his dad threw him the baseball and he threw it left hand and went uh oh <laughs> we got a guy who throws left handed but does everything else right handed three two pitch it's hit high and deep down the left field line this is going to be a fair ball hits at the base of the wall Frazier plays it back in and smoke has to hustle the throw was offline but there's another great at bat for Justin smoke he got one pitch up in that entire at bat and he hammered it for a double. Yeah well, that's his left handed swing not trying to change anything. There's a little bit more of an uppercut he says because his left hand is the dominant hand split stays under and you can see the little bit of an arc in his swing from this side. That's how he can elevate the ball and he's strong enough to drive it all the way down the left field line opposite field off the wall. Frazier gets over there. That's his first attempt in the outfield as a Yankee. Two nothing now for Kendris Morales. The Yankees have the lead, and Morales fouls off the first pitch. Boy, that smoke at bat, he did a terrific job of laying off all those low pitches. There were a couple borderline strikes down bottom, but boy, when he left that splitter up there. Smokey jumped all over it. That's the best way to hit against Masahiro Tanaka. Stay disciplined. I tell you, he's been locked in all season long. For Smoke, that's his 12th double of the season. Blue Jays need to take advantage of the leadoff double here in the fourth.
Morales has struck out on a splitter his first time up and, and we spoke to him specifically about Tanaki he said he throws a lot of splits and a lot of breaking balls. And you can see he has struggled against Tanaka one for 12. The only hit being a home run. He is a baseball player. He, he understands the game. He understands what he's trying to do to him. He says I might get one fastball. Oh and one. And he strikes out. Looked like he foul tipped it, but he didn't get the benefit of that call. And he strikes out for a second time. That's five strikeouts for Tanaka. The last pitch was off the plate. And this one was off the plate too. Morales asking if he foul tipped that one. But Jerry Mills said no. So now Steve Pierce. He struck out his first time. Up. Pierce takes one right on the corner. Tanaka does not make too many mistakes when he's on his game. He just doesn't leave many hittable pitches out over the plate. And he's always in your head, isn't he? If you're looking for that splitter, he throws the fastball. If you're looking for the fastball, you can throw that slow curve. Hit hard, but right to Headley at third. Smoke has to hold at second, two away. The Honda Checkered Flag event is back. It's a great time to give your pulse a racing lesson. Beautiful evening in New York. 28 degrees at the start of play tonight. It has cooled off some. Perfect night for baseball. Ezekiel Carrera had a two out single his first time up. Blue Jays have three hits. The Yankees have two hits, but the Yankees have scored the only two runs of this game. Tanaka drops that breaking ball in there for a strike. You just never ever feel comfortable like okay oh now he's got to throw me a pitch now he's got to throw me a fastball. No. You know go up there looking for the breaking ball. We, we showed that earlier tonight about how many off speed pitches he throws. Seventy percent of his pitches are off speed pitches so why wouldn't you go up there looking for it. And there he gets benefit of a call ninety four with the fastball. And on the outside corner, it's 0 and 2. Guerrero's got a battle to knock him out. Gary Sanchez might have cost Tanaka a strike there as he had a lot of movement as he tried to corral that breaking ball and that might have thrown the umpire off. Watch the catcher. He's moving all over the place and you can see kind of blocked out Jerry Meals. Up down and then tried to bring it back into the strike zone. Sanchez with the block ball in the dirt. Two and two now. See how he jumped ahead 0 and 2 right there, and he's just going to start nibbling right here. And if you can stay patient, force him up in the strike zone, you will get a pitch to hit. Tanaka taking a long time on this pivotal pitch. Now he's set. Takes off the plate. Full count. He never really settle in. Barney is on deck. Smoke with a leadoff double. He hasn't moved off second. 
Morales struck out. Pierce grounded out. Now Carrera with a full count. Just never gives in, never nope. gives you a pitch out over the plate. That was a breaking ball. Herrera had to battle to foul off. And still, you know, nibbling. Remember, it was 0 2 very quickly against Carrera. Now he's trying to put him away, nibbling on those corners, trying to change speeds. Now Sanchez wants to go out there and make sure they have the right pitch here, 3 and 2. Carrera singled his last time up. A two out single little looper in the center that Brett Gardner almost made a sliding catch on. Russell Martin not starting tonight. I'll be back in there tomorrow against the lefty CC Sabathia. Another 3 2 pitch from Tanaka. Might have been ball four. Couple of strikeouts in the inning, and after the leadoff double, the Blue Jays go 0 for 3 with runners in scoring position. Can't cash in the smoke double. Petition in the official MLB.com home run derby game on the App Store and Google Play. You can swing for the fences against more than 10 million players from around the world as your favorite derby all star. You can download home run derby for free today. In the actual home run derby next week in Miami, Justin Smoke will not be taking part. Aaron Judge, however, guys, will. That should be a scene. Aaron Judge, Giancarlo Stanton. Miguel Sano, Corey, Cody Bellinger, those are all prospective home run participants. Sanchez is already committed. He's going to hit in there. Cody Bellinger is likely to play in the home run contest. Justin Boer of the Marlins said he's nice. going to be involved in Hometown the home run. Hometown guy. Yep. He's hit 18 home runs. That'll yeah. be a big show down there. Everybody's looking forward to a Stanton and Judge that, yeah, I'm not taking anything away from any of those other guys because they're great home run hitters in their own right. But here you got these two guys. They're like Paul Bunyan going at each other. Chase Headley gets a leadoff single to start the bottom of the fourth for the Yankees. Headley was hit by a pitch with the bases loaded back in the first and picked up an RBI. Home run contest has been such a big part of the All Star. Festivities indoors in Miami, and they'll hit some balls to places we have never seen balls hit before. Stanton won it last year, right? San Diego. Yes. So yes. he's going to be back to defend his title. Wouldn't that be something against this young slugger here? Yeah, it's going to be fun to watch. The workout day precedes that, of course. The home run derby, I believe it starts at 8 Eastern time. Jacoby Ellsbury, the DH, he walked with the bases loaded. Yankees scored both of their runs in the first inning. A hit batter and a bases loaded walk. 
Marcus Stroman threw a season high 119 pitches last time out over seven and two thirds against the Orioles. So far I haven't seen any indications that has had an adverse effect on his start tonight. No, his fastball has been good. His slider has been really good. Yankee hitters have been very patient. They're really trying to get that pitch count up. That, that's what I think. 27 pitches in the first inning for Marcus to get through that inning gave up a couple of runs but then a one two three second inning one two three third inning. Little chopper smoke comes after it fields it in foul territory. And we'll do it all again. Smoke tried to get to it before it trickled foul but he couldn't get there in time. Asbury will have another swing. His head that goes back to first. Well, the beauty about Marcus is, yeah, he gave up a leadoff single, but he gets that ground ball with regularity. He's already had one double play to get him out of an inning. That was in the first. Had Ronald Torres to hit into the inning ending double play. Ellsbury pokes this one through the left side of the infield. I tell you what, Marcus Stroman gives up a lot of hits, but a lot of them are just like that. Aaron Judge's single in the first inning was a ground ball that found the hole on the right side of the infield. Ellsbury just takes what Stroman gives him and slaps it through the hole on the left side. Yeah, and you say to yourself, well, why couldn't this be right at the third baseman? And it would have been a double play, but it's out of the reach of both Donaldson and Goins. You said it earlier, 50% of the outs that are recorded for Marcus Stroman are balls on the ground. So. Blue Jays now looking for a bunt after the first two batters reach. Ronald Torres, the second baseman, he squares to bunt and bunts it back to Stroman. They got a shot at third. He bobbled the ball, but still has time. Why Stroman's a terrific fielder. He was a an infielder in his freshman season at Duke, and he got off the mound like a cat. And even though he bobbled it, he still had time to get Chase Headley at third. You know, helping yourself out. Defensively is such a big part of pitching. Watch how quickly Marcus gets off of that mound. Luke Maley is screaming at him, three, 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 to let him know to go to third base. Josh Donaldson acts like a first baseman, stretches for that ball, and he is out as the Blue Jays get that lead runner and keep that double play in order. Now they have a good candidate for that double play in Chris Carter. Carter flied out to center and is only at bat tonight. First pitch strike as he gets ahead of Chris Carter. Marcus is making his 17th start of the season. This is his third start of the season against the Yankees. No decision in those two starts. Go to second, and Barney had to go off his glove, but not far enough for the runners to advance. Stroman's ERA coming into this game in those two starts against New York at an even seven. Gave up seven earned runs over nine innings in two starts. Pat mentioned his previous start here at Yankee Stadium lasted just three innings. That was back on the 3rd of May. Ground ball. Donaldson with the short hop. Barney for one back to first double play. That ground ball serves Marcus Stroman very well. Second double play of the ball game that ends the bottom of the fourth. Keeps the Blue Jays within two.
at the halfway point. We thought we would compare last year after 81 games to this season after 81 games. You can see there are dramatic differences across the board. Not so much in ERA, a little bit higher ERA. The batting average is about the same, but it's the run differential. The Blue Jays had a plus 35 after 81 games last year, a minus 45. They've been outscored by 45 runs the first 81 games of 2017. Hitting with runners in scoring position a little bit different also. That, that, that's the only difference. They just have not been scoring runs like they did last year. Last year, 249 with runners in scoring position. That was still 24th in the majors. The league average for runners in scoring position, 255, and Blue Jays well under that. That's in the major leagues. Popped up. Chase Headley waits on it on the left side of the infield. Farney is retired on the pop up. Four straight retired by Tanaka after the smoke leadoff double last inning. CC Sabathia will start tomorrow for the Yankees. He's been on a disabled list about a month with a hamstring problem. He was off to a great start this season. Yeah, he beat the Blue Jays. Earlier this year, they might get Adam Warren back tomorrow. Also, he threw Sunday, said he felt pretty good. They were going to make a decision today. He's eligible to come off tomorrow. Also, he's a big guy out in their bullpen, a very valuable guy for the Yankees in their bullpen. Yeah, you know, you talk about the Yankees and their tough stretch that they have gone through recently. We mentioned they lost 14 of their last 19 games coming into this game, but they've dealt with significant injuries as well. Brian Goins gets two fastballs. That went way up from Tanaka. Ball in the strength. Didi Gregorius missed 20 games early in the season. Gary Sanchez missed 21 games. Aroldis Chapman missed 33 games, their closer. Ellsbury missed 29 games. They've had 12 players on the DL in 12 different DL stints. Currently, they're without Sabathia, Warren, Hicks, Holiday, Holiday, Castro, Castro's on a DL. Dustin Fowler, the rookie, was injured in his first inning in the major leagues, and he's been lost for the season with a ruptured right patella tendon. So when you have all of those injuries, you got to count on your farm system. They've used 16 rookies. This year they used 17 all of last season. The Yankees they've used 16 already halfway through this year. That rookie's doing pretty good right yeah, there. He's, he's all right. They've had 10 players make their major league debuts this year. Jones hits it foul that breaking ball pulled foul. Only the Cincinnati Reds have had more players make their major league debut this season. Cincinnati's had 11 players make their big league debut. But the Yan Yankees are hanging in there. I think everybody needs a little bit concerned right now with the Boston Red Sox. Yeah, they, at least what we saw over the last three days, they look like they're ready to go on a roll. Their starting pitching has been ironed out. Their bullpen's pretty good, and we all know they can hit. Tanaka using more fastballs in this at bat to Goins than he has at any point in the ball game. He has a lot of three and two counts, doesn't he? A lot. Here's another one. Comes back with that little cutter for strike three. Just enough movement to get the outside corner. Two up, two down here in the fifth for Tanaka. We mentioned the Yankees have lost seven games in the standings to the Boston Red Sox over this most recent slump. Boston, 47 wins, 35 losses. They have a three game lead over the Yankees, and the Blue Jays lost the three game series to Boston. They have dropped to nine and a half back in the East. Yeah, it doesn't get any easier. You got these three and then four with Houston and at Detroit at Boston and then at Cleveland before they come back home with about a week left in the month of July.
Luke Bailey strikeout victim back in the third. There's a drive and this one's going to get down in left field. Clint Frazier over to play it back into the infield and Mailey will check in at second with a two out double. Well, that, Mailey, that's just his second double of the season. That, that number that we talked about a couple of innings ago about if you fall behind, the slugging percentage is 9-11. Well, he fell behind 1-0 and to Luke Mailey, left a pitch out over the plate, and Luke spanks it down the left field line. Ball doesn't get to the wall. It hits the grass and chucks up, and Frazier's over there to pick it up. But Mailey hustled out of the box, got himself into scoring position. And that slugging percentage goes up after he falls behind the number nine hitter. Once again, that pattern continues to play itself out. Now Bautista, who has been on base twice, has a chance with two outs to get the Blue Jays on the board. Jose singled in the first, walked into third. Ball gets away from Sanchez and goes all the way back to the backstop, and Melee will go over to third. Sanchez has been charged with six pass balls this season. I don't know that that ball hit in the dirt. Bautista swung right through it and it got away from the catcher. Well, let's take a look at the replay. He's up high. Sees the breaking ball and looks like he just missed it. That should be number seven, shouldn't it? I would think so. It's certainly a catchable ball and he could have caught it in the air. It is a seventh pass ball charged to Sanchez. Look where those balls are tough to lay off and I know you want to be aggressive in these situations but Tanaka he is the master of that strike to ball breaking pitch. Well the difference between this at bat and the other two Jose Bautista at bats there was nobody on before. He can afford to be a little patient he wants to drive this run in. So he's expanded that strike zone just a little bit. Sanchez wanted it up too high for Bautista's liking. The Yankees won five of the nine games these two clubs played here last year. But the Blue Jays really had the upper hand at Rogers Center. Last season, eight and two against New York at home. Tanaka strikes out Bautista. Eight strikeouts through five innings. He leaves a runner stranded at third. Celebrating his 50th birthday today has also made some key trades and it all started with Michael Pineda trade back in 2012. They had a great player Jesus Montero who was like the next quote Yankee big thing. They gave him up for Pineda. And then D. D. Gregorius was a T three team trade. 
Bobby Ray was part of that. Aaron Hicks, that was a, a throwaway. It's like John Ryan Murphy. They're like, what do you want Aaron Hicks for? He's turned out to be a heck of a player. And then the Castro trade, what do they call that Castro trade? The something for nothing, thanks for nothing <laughs> trade, because they traded Adam Warren to the Cubs for Castro and got Warren back. So they got Starlin Castro for nothing. And he's turned into an all star at second base. Said they needed some right handed pop. They needed a second baseman with a little pop. They found it in Starlin Castro. Basically got him for nothing. And then this guy at the plate, Clint Frazier, came over in the Andrew Miller trade just last season. Glaber Torres, the young shortstop that has. Undergone Tommy John surgery on his non throwing arm, his left arm. Lost for the season, but he came from the Cubs in the Aroldis Chapman trade. That's a pretty good pitch. Stroman has not gotten that call, that low strike. That's his bread and butter pitch. He needs that. Yeah, if he gets that, he gets them to start swinging at it and gets a lot of ground balls, so he's doing the right thing, taking a deep breath and just recalibrating behind the mound. Two and one to Clint Frazier, number nine hitter. Chase that pitch might have been low. Now it's two and two. You were talking about Glaver Torres. He's out for the season. It was a slide, an awkward slide, head first slide. Home plate. That home plate that he messed up his elbow, his left elbow. Yeah, he reached for home plate, catch put tag on him, and he tore ligaments in his left elbow. 2 2 pitch. Foul back. Clint Frazier made his major league debut on Saturday down in Houston. He had a double for his first hit and then homered in his next at bat. So he becomes just the third Yankee in franchise history to have multiple extra base hits in his big league debut. Dixie Walker did it in 2000, in 1931, and Mike Pallirulo in 1984. Showing a pretty good iron on that one right on top of plate break. Look how quick his wrist come through and he just whisked that ball into the Crawford boxes down in Houston. That's his first big league home run. At 12 home runs down in the minor leagues. Stroman gets that good pitch down and away and Frazier strikes up. One away in the bottom of the fifth. It's the second strikeout for Stroman. Not much you can do with that one when it's executed perfectly down and away. Some late break right underneath the baseball bat. Good pitch for Marcus. And then Brett Gardner will step in the box with one out. Gardner has grounded out twice. Once to the catcher, two, three, and then ran it out to the shortstop. You see Maley exaggerating that target down and away trying to get Strowman zeroed in on that low and away pitch and it's something Marcus picked up on last time out and he spoke to his catcher Russell Martin in that game against Baltimore. That ball is up out over the plate and Gunder jumped all over it. He's headed for second. Here's the throw over the head of Goins and Brett Gardner. He never ever thought about a single. From the moment he hit that ball, he was thinking, gee. Well, he knows Carrera is just playing center field for the third time, and he was going to challenge him as soon as he hit that ball. He's like, throw me out at second base. They're shading him to left center. He pulls it into right center field. Never slowed down, put his head down, and really the throw not even close. Watch Gardner come out of that box. He eyes that. He knows where it is. It comes hard charging around first base. He's got the head down, aggressively gets into second base with a double. Well, I tell you what, that's the way you play the game. Brett Gardner never hesitating, and he gets himself into scoring position. That's his ninth hit in 30 at bats against Marcus Stroman, his second double against Stroman. He ended the game Saturday in that game you were talking about on a similar play like that with two outs in the ninth inning, sliced the ball to left center field, tried to stretch it into a double was not going to make it put on the brakes and was actually thrown out at first base to end the ball game. That time he makes up for it with a nice hit first slide. 
Damon Judge, one for two. Judge got a base hit through the right side of the infield in the first inning, came around to score the first run. He has now reached base in 34 straight starts as a Yankee, and Stroman has called the training staff out. Something, he's got a cramp in his hand or something. Blisters have never been a problem for Marcus. That's really strange, and Mike Frosted, the trainer, looking at his hand, can't really see if it's something related to the fingernail or not, but that got everybody moving down in the bullpen. Now that came out of nowhere, didn't it? Yeah. That, blisters haven't been a problem. And it looks it, like it's his third finger, his ring finger on his right hand. Whatever it is, Stroman appears to be good with it. Couldn't really tell, but it looked like Frosthead might have been trimming a nail or trimming a piece of skin off finger. But hmm. Stroman's going to get a pitch or two to throw. But from what I could tell, it looked like his ring finger, which really doesn't have a whole lot to do with the pitches you throw. This is the last pitch right here. Watch the reaction from Marcus as soon as he delivers that breaking ball. Looks right at his finger. Huh. Really interesting. Not seen that before, but it looked as though it was his ring finger and not. Not the index, index finger or the middle finger. And now Frostad explaining it to the pitching coach, Pete Walker. So a ball. And no strikes to Aaron Judge with Gardner at second. Fan down and away. No reason to give in to Judge in this situation. You got a base open, another right handed hitter on deck. He goes after that good slider, may have broken his bat, needs a new piece of lumber. But yeah, if you're going to pitch to Judge, I would certainly work to the corners. He's got great coverage, obviously. It's 6'7. He can reach just about anything in the strength zone. The Blue Jays had some minimal success against Judge in Toronto when they elevated the fastball. Elevated the four seam fastball up. Judge is on pace to draw 120 walks this year. Showing a lot of patience. First base is open. Good pitch. Stroman got the call. He's been working that down and away strike all night long, and he hasn't had many calls go his way. I know Stroman doesn't elevate many fastballs, but this would be a perfect time to do it. Everything is down and away to judge. Ground ball Barney at second will throw out Judge. Gardner moves to third on the app. Now they're two away. Stroman made some good pitches to Judge down and away and got the ground ball. And that's where he was locked in that last start, especially for the right handed batters of the Baltimore Orioles. Just everything down and away. Not much you can do with that, even if you're six seven. So now with the runner at third Gary Sanchez the catcher will step in he singled to right field his first time a two strike breaking ball he hit on the line to right. He wasn't trying to single to right field on that swing was he. Well, he had wow. a home run cut didn't he. Well he has been clutch. 347 with runners in scoring position this season. Sensing that they're going to throw the ball inside. He got it. He missed it.
Another good moving fastball at 96. One of the best fastballs Strowman has thrown tonight. Let's see if he cuts his swing down now that it's 0 and 2 with a runner in scoring position. Well, he had a two strike base hit to right field his first time. He got a breaking ball in that two strike situation. Strowman might get him to chase a breaking ball out of the zone down and away. Yankees scored two in the first. The only runs in this ball game. I like that they're trying to pound him in like that. His uh, approach at least trying to take that pitch looked like he was trying to stay inside the ball and stay behind it. Do you double up with that pitch. Sure. Why not. Looks like they're going back outside. You got him. That previous fastball set up that tentative swing with two strikes and Stroman leaves a base runner stranded at third. We played five here in New York. Donaldson, Smoke, and Morales. Could we come back to Yankee Stadium? Twenty thousand in attendance will receive an Aaron Sanchez bobblehead presented by Rogers. That's when the Blue Jays play the Red Hot Astros. 107 start. BlueJays.com for tickets for Aaron Sanchez bobblehead day presented by Rogers. I spoke with Sanchez. He just said, "Finally, he's finally back. He's finally healthy. He finally has no blister or finger or bleeding issues. He's finally going to be back in that Blue Jays rotation against Houston later in the week." Sanchez through his last rehab game yesterday in Buffalo fired 76 pitches nine curveballs less than usual nine changeups more than he's used to just to make sure he had all his stuff working guys. Well that's good news and if you have Aaron Sanchez back and have a healthy Aaron Sanchez for the second half of the season certainly then your rotations at full strength starters look like they're really Starting to pitch well. Jay Happ's been good his last two or three. Marcus Stroman has been good. There's some talk on the bench. I'm sure that has something to do with Marcus's finger. You get Sanchez back. That's never a good sign, is it? No. John Gibbons picks up the phone to the bullpen, and that's probably not the best news Blue Jays want to hear right now. Josh Donaldson takes a cut at the first pitch from Tanaka. Blue Jays shut out on four hits through five innings. Donaldson over two with a strikeout. Tanaka has eight strikeouts through five innings. No leg kick. See that? He's been struggling a little bit picking up the baseball. I mean, normally we see Josh with that high leg kick that last swing. He didn't pick his leg up. It's all about adjustments. <laughs> Just a toe tap right there <laughs> and you know what you got to do something. Donaldson is one for his last 22. Searching. Right now he's searching for something that feels comfortable. Uh, I guess he feels like if he doesn't have that exaggerated leg kick that he can see the ball. Trying to keep that leg grounded right now. 
Well, no one made a better adjustment than Josh Donaldson did last year during the postseason. I mean, he saw a steady diet of breaking balls. He had bad legs at that time. He had some knee issues. His legs weren't underneath him, but boy, did he have a great postseason. Hitting the ball the other way, hitting a lot of breaking balls. It's this one in the air to second base. Torres on the outfield grass makes the catch. Donaldson makes the first out of the inning. Well, we mentioned Marcus Stroman. He had a situation, and I'm not sure where that finger issue is. He's showing Joe J. Happ. And it looks like he's campaigning to stay in the game, and everybody's interested, obviously. Aaron Loop loosening up for the Blue Jays. Or wouldn't that be something? You get one pitcher back who has dealt with a blister issue, and now Stroman appears to have some sort of finger problem, and we have no idea knowing what exactly it is. Well, we saw Gibby get on the horn and go down to the to the bullpen. There's some lefties coming up for the Yankees. Tanaka off the mound makes a good play and throws smoke out. Two quick outs here in the top of the six. So it looks like Marcus might be finished tonight. It looked like Marcus said, let me try, let me try. So he's going down and whatever is the problem it looks like he's going to try to start the next yeah. inning see if he can't pitch yeah. through it let's hope so I mean he's throwing a heck of a ball game had a great start last time throwing a heck of a ball game maybe it's just air and get up just in case and Miss Morales has had a steady diet of everything they've thrown the kitchen <laughs> sink at him tonight he has struck out twice struck out on a splitter in the second inning and it looked like another splitter got him in the fourth inning that looked like a slow curveball to start this at bat. You ask him about what his approach was against Tanaka and that steady diet of off speed pitches prior to this game. Yeah when we said uh, when we asked him what he was going to get he said I'm going to get a lot of breaking balls and I said well how are you going to attack it and he said I got to hit the ball back through the middle. Stays on that ball, but it's going to slice foul into the seats. And, and I think that's the, the proper approach back through the middle. He said, if he tries to slip the fastball by me on the outside part of the plate, I'm going to go the other way and just slap it the other way. It was interesting how he described what he would do if he didn't get an off speed pitch. He said, I'll take the fastball to left, and if it's a little bit harder, it'll probably be to center. And if it's soft, I'll take it to right. But it's got to be a strike. That's the whole challenge facing Tanaka. Okay, you know what they're going to face, what you're going to face, what you're going to get. Now you have to execute. Lays off that pitch down. That's why hitting is so hard. I mean, you can have all the factors, right? I know what he's going to do. I know what I have to do. The whole thing, but still, a round ball and a round bat, and you have to hit it square. Gets a piece of it, and you can see Morales is really grinding. He really cut his swing down there, just trying to put the bat on the ball. Really an interesting guy, and he has played all over the diamond. He has pitched, he's played the infield, he's played the outfield. What was the video he was showing you? As a kid, yeah, he was a 19-year-old right? kid. He pitched two innings in that <laughs> game, and it was in Canada, I believe, Thunder Bay. High fly ball deep to right. Judge back on the track and makes the catch. Morales just missed it. But Tanaka through six innings, shutting out the Blue Jays. They can't get much going against the tough right hander.
Oakland is finished for the evening. He threw 79 pitches, goes five innings, five hits, two earned runs, and a couple of walks. He hit a batter and walked a batter with the bases loaded in the first inning. The only two runs the Yankees scored came in the first inning. And after that, he really pitched very well and was able to minimize the impact of those five hits and he leaves the game trailing two to nothing turns things over to Aaron Luke the lefty yeah three up three down in the second and the third leadoff singles but he got himself out of that so he's only good for five tonight last batter he faced he struck out now he will give way to Aaron Luke for the 38th time there's some left handers coming up in the lineup for the New York Yankees so loop is into the game unfortunately lefties have hit 320 against Lair he's got those reverse splits you can see right he's at 238 he hasn't been able to nail that fastball against the lefties where he needs to get it it'll be Gregorius Headley and Jacoby Ellsbury Headley a switch hitter Gregorius and Ellsbury lefties Yankees shortstop is 0 for 1 with a walk and Gregorius goes after the first pitch. Another good season for Gregorius. He had a 20 home run season a year ago. He got 10 homers and 36 ribbies to this point. Loop ahead 0 and 2. That's the breaking ball that we have seen from Aaron in the past. Pardon my pun, a looping breaking ball. It's got some some hump to it. He tried to throw a slider and he was just missing with it. So they're now trying to go back to the same type of breaking ball that he had previously. I think the key for him though is his fastball command. When he's commanding the fastball, that's that's when he's had success. Like the left handed batter up now in Gregorius, he can spot that ball in or out. We've seen him painted in against righties. Nope ahead of DD Gregorius, so wouldn't shoot. Bottom of the six. Yankees lead it two to nothing. High fly ball into shallow center. Carrera is there, one away. Buy six cans of Beauty Tone paint and get the seven free. Available exclusively at home hardware and building center locations. Beauty Tone, Canada's color experts. Well, the right-hander Danny Barnes is up and throwing for the Blue Jays. So no one's called anything. Nobody's called anything. And Chase Headley was holding at home plate. And now Joe Spada, the third base coach, says, wait a bit, that was a foul ball. And Headley didn't have benefit of a video review. And Jerry Meal said, I don't see anything. Now Joe Girardi's out of the Yankee dugout. John Gibbons, Louis Rivera saying, he's out. You called it. You didn't call anything. And Girardi, he can't believe it. He's just going to give up the argument and Chase Headley will be called out. No foul ball. Well, Take a look at it. Hit him right in the foot. Yeah. That's it, why Headley didn't move. It looked like it hit the dirt and then off of his toe and bounced out towards third base where Josh had to go to his left. Yeah, Headley reacted as you would expect, having fouled the ball off his foot, but the umpires didn't see it. Might be one of the easiest outs there on Loop has ever yeah. recorded. Yeah, he'll take it too. Two away. Jacoby Ellsbury had a bases loaded walk in the first and a ground ball single in the fourth. Single went through the hole at shortstop on the left side. Got to get this guy right here. We just had a shot of Danny Barnes warming up. We might go to Danny if Aaron loses Ellsbury. Ronald Torres is the next batter. 
three and oh. Gareas filling in for Stalin Castro. He's on the deal. There's a strike now three and one. First of three against the Yankees. Tomorrow it'll be CC Sabathia and J Happ. A couple of lefties matching up. On Wednesday, it'll be Michael Pineda who's really thrown the ball well lately against Marco Estrada. Remember, both of those games, a 105 start pregame show begins at 1230 with Jamie Campbell and Greg Zahn, so make sure you tune in. A couple of day games here. Full count. Ground ball. Barney waits at second, and he'll go to first. That's the inning. So Aaron Loop has a three up, three down inning in the sixth. The Blue Jays trying to mount some sort of attack against Masahiro Tanaka, Pierce, Carrera, and Barney when we come back to face Tanaka. Starting with the Blue Jays and Yankees here in the Bronx. That's at 1 o'clock Eastern. Then the Orioles face the Brewers at 4 o'clock Eastern on Sportsnet Now. Visit snnow.ca for more information. Buck today in Milwaukee. Cato Kalen won the 50 50. More than 12 grand. Remember Cato? The Cato Kalen? The Cato Kalen. Wow. Good day for him. Not a good day for the Orioles. Who started for the Orioles today? That was Wade oh, Miley. Right. Wade inning Miley. into third, seven earned runs on seven hits and a total of 67 pitches in an inning oh. and two thirds. Steve Pierce trying to get something going against Tanaka. Blue Jays have just four hits. See. Playing today because he's had a couple of home runs against Tanaka in his career, hit over 400. Gregorius deep in the hole, it's short, long throw in time, one away. Blue Jays had a leadoff double in the fourth by Smoke and a two out double by Melee. That's the only extra base hits. There's Tyler Clipper cranking it up down in the Yankees bullpen. Just in case Tanaka is getting close to 100 pitches. And you're getting closer to that Batanzas Chapman territory. Correa shows bunt, pulls the bat back. No swing. 1 0 to Carrera. Ezekiel starting in center field. As Pat mentioned at the outside of this game, no Tulowitzki, no Pilar, and no Russell Martin start tonight, first of three in New York. Back to back day games, Tuesday and Wednesday. 
that ball just it starts right at the knees and then just drops under the knees. Anybody looking for a game plan, something to solve Tanaka? So far, not much has worked. Herrera bunts through that fastball. Why don't you now? Well, Blue Jays in their career have hit just 229 against Tanaka. And he's had 64 strikeouts coming into this game. That's the most versus any of the opponents that he has faced in his career. And a lot of it, just like we have seen tonight, a lot of split finger fastballs, sliders, slow curveballs. Oh, that hit Carrera on the back of the leg. Fastball down behind him, got him on the back of that right leg, and he'll go to first. Tanaka made his first big league start against the Blue Jays on April 4th, 2014 at Frontier Center. And he got off to kind of a shaky start. That one, Melky took him deep. This looked like a cutter. It was 91 miles an hour, and he got Zeke right on the calf. Just can't get out of the way. You move your feet to try and get out of the way, but there's nowhere to go. Melky Cabrera hit a 1 1 pitch out of the ballpark, the first batter Tanaka faced in the big leagues. And everybody went, well, this guy's nothing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He ended up winning that game 7 to 3, his first big league start. Darwin Barney has popped out twice so far tonight. The Blue Jays in the three game sweep at the hands of the Red Sox were outscored 29 to 6. And they managed just 17 hits in three games. Got a hit if you want to win in the American League East. Blue Jays have been a good hitting team the last few years. They don't have the boppers in there today, so I wonder if Gibby at the bottom of the lineup here might try and force some action here. Well, Darwin Barney can certainly handle the bat. And Carrera, one of the better base runners for the Blue Jays. He's getting a nice aggressive lead at first base. There he goes. Hit and run is on. High pitch swung it on and missed. Carrera is headed for third. Gardner's throw is high. And boy, the Yankees caught a break. That hit the screen in front of the dugout. Looked like it was going to go into the dugout. And that would have led to a run. An air charge to Sanchez, his ninth air of the season. You Carrera just, picks up a stolen base. You just had a sense that the Blue Jays might try something with the count one and one. With some speed at first base, and it's going to work out for him. Hit run was on, but Sanchez has a wild throw into center field, and Gardner's was even wilder. And thank goodness they put that railing out in front and the fencing in front of the plate or in front of the bull, the dugout, or the Blue Jays would have had a run. Yeah, it just missed that opening on the stairwell going down into the dugout. So Carrera now at third. The Yankees are going to play the infield back. Kind of interesting situation here. It's a two run lead for New York. So Joe Girardi says, you know what? I don't want this situation to get out of hand. I'll trade a run for an out in the seventh. Contact. Keep the ball in the middle of the diamond. He makes contact, but it's foul. Then Barney threw the bat at the ball just to stay alive. You know what you can't sit back you were just talking about the scores that the Blue Jays have had against the Boston Red Sox they only scored six runs so John Gibbons rolls the dice and tries to make something happen offensively force the Yankees to field the baseball now they've got a runner at third base less than two out There's a little player pop up that's going to drop and bring home a run. Darwin Barney battled with two strikes and flares one to left to pick up an RBI. 
And the Blue Jays have cut the lead in half. Carrera got hit by a pitch, stole a base, went to third on the air by the catcher, and comes in on the base hit by Darwin Barney. They elected to go upstairs. They were trying to get the fastball up. Look at Gary Sanchez wants it up, but he doesn't get it up high enough or in. And Barney always seems to find a way to do something to help the ball club. Drops that ball into left field. Blue Jays are on the board. Tenth RBI of the season for Darwin Barney. That's the first hit in the ball game with a runner in scoring position. The Blue Jays were 0 for 4. The Yankees are 0 for 5. Now just 1 for 10 combined in this ball game. Brian Goins 0 for 2. Ran out the first baseman and struck out. Runner is moving. Barney will go to second as Goins taps out. Hit and run again for the Blue Jays trying to get something going. Ryan Goins tried to pull that ball through the hole on the right side. But he could just tap it back to the mound. I, I like that they're trying to do something. They're trying to be aggressive. Yeah, the offense has been so stagnant. You just got to try something, create some holes on the infield by starting the base runner. And we mentioned that Bouje scored six runs in three games against Boston, and they have one run tonight. And they got that one run by being aggressive, forcing the Yankees to field the baseball. Sanchez threw one in the center field. Gardner almost threw one. Into the dugout. Luke Bailey picked up a double back in the fifth, his last time up. For Luke, his second double of the season, just his 12th hit in 98 at bats. For 18 this season with a runner in scoring position. Blue Jays have not fared well as a team in these situations tonight. One for five. But Tanaka has continued to make quality pitches. He doesn't leave many pitches up out over the plate where you can really get a good whack out. Oh, and two, the crowd trying to rally behind Tanaka. Eight strikeouts so far. Still got a little extra. Yeah, a little something extra. That was his 110th pitch of the night. His season high is 112. And he reached back for a little something extra right there and it was off the plate. Through 112 and a win against Cincinnati back on the 8th of May. the mound. Tanaka gets out of it. The Blue Jays get on the board with Darwin Barney RBI single. They've cut into the lead, but Tanaka and the Yankees still hold on to a 2-1 lead.
Chris Stroman started this game. This pits to Aaron Judge, and Stroman walks off the mound. Training staff would come out along with the manager and the pitching coach and have a look at Marcus Stroman's pitching hand. Mike Frosted is looking at something, and then there's a discussion in the dugout in between innings, and Stroman. To me, it looked like he was saying, okay, let me give it a try, and he would go back out for the next thing. That didn't happen. He did not pitch in the bottom of the sixth in here, and Luke took over, and then Luke retired to side in order. Now Danny Barnes comes in, but we have not been given an update on the status of Marcus Stroman, but something related to his pitching. Yeah, game. yeah, so safe and sorry. So he only was good for five innings tonight, a couple of hurt runs. Danny Barnes is now the third pitcher of the night for the Blue Jays. There are Danny's numbers one and two of the 257 earned run average in 35 innings this year. Batters haven't really hit a whole lot against and a lot of soft contact against Danny. Barnes last worked on the 30th when he threw an inning in the third, gave up a couple of hits to the Boston Red Sox. Chance to face the Yankees. Danny Barnes is a New York native. He's from Manhasset, New York, also on Long Island. He went to Princeton University in New Jersey. Drafted by the Blue Jays and came up last year. Ronald Torres goes after the first pitch and fouls it. We have seen a few more breaking balls from Barnes of late. He's added a little wrinkle to his approach. That slider might be an effective pitch for him. Yeah, he, he said, you know. My best pitch is the fastball. My second best pitch is a changeup. The guys will start getting on that pitch. So I'm going to start using my slider that I used when I was younger. Just give it a little something else to think about, something else to look at. The important thing for him, and he does a good job, is he throws a lot of strikes and a lot of quality pitches. Marcus Stroman went five. Aaron Loop had a good inning through 11 pitches in his inning of work and retired to side in order. Now, Danny Barnes. Fly ball deep to left field. This ball is hooking and is a foul ball. Down in that left field corner to Reyes all the way to second. Aaron Sanchez back with the ball club after making a rehab start in Triple A Buffalo, and Dr. Biagini is checking him out, <laughs> making sure that he's okay. And for what the Blue Jays are telling us, that he's all right, no, no problems with the finger. Danny Barnes ahead of Ronald Torres, one and two. Torres has hit into a double play and bunted into a fielder's choice. He was up. With runners at first and second in the fourth and nobody out and bunted into a fielder's choice they got the lead runner at third. Dallin Batances on his way to his fourth all star game starting to loosen up for the Yankees. Hit in the air to center. Not deep and Carrera makes the catch. Happy 150th to our home and native land. Honda, proudly driving Canadians since 1973. Gorgeous evening in New York. We're in the Bronx. That's Yankee Stadium from the outside. We're on the inside, and the Yankees have a 2 1 lead as they hit the bottom of the seventh. Chris Carter, the first baseman, takes a first pitch strike from Danny Barnes. Carter tied at Nolan Arenado last year for the home run title in the National League. And had a tough time getting the job. Signed a one year contract with the Yankees. 41 home runs. 41 home runs. And that wasn't good enough to get one of those mega deals that we saw this offseason. Settled here with the Yankees and actually lost the first base job in spring training. Lost that to Greg Bird. But then when Bird got injured the first part of this season. Carter has been the everyday pretty much the everyday first baseman for the Yankees making his 47th start at first base tonight. Look at the 
grouping of pitches by Danny Barnes down and away and that's his bread and butter his ability to command the strike zone and pitch up in the strike zone and now is a great time to elevate a fastball everything has been down two and two now to Chris Carter. Masahiro Tanaka seven strong innings one run on five hits eight strikeouts and looks like he might be done for the night. There's that elevated fastball he's got to get up even higher I think get it up over his hands and he will swing at it should have a strikeout. Bailey wanted it up. Barnes shakes him off. He's going away. Missed with that fastball. Bailey had called for the fastball upstairs, but Barnes didn't want to throw that pitch. Now it's a full count. And Barnes loses him. One out walk. The WestJet Blue Jays fan flyaway contest is on now. Enter for your chance to cheer on the Blue Jays in New York City with WestJet. Go to bluejays.com slash WestJet contest to enter. Beautiful shot of the Empire State Building all decked out tonight in green. And we are at Yankee Stadium up in the Bronx. Fourth of July tomorrow and lots of celebrations planned around the five boroughs of New York. Clint Frazier the rookie has gone over two tonight Stroman struck him out in the fifth playing in his first game at Yankee Stadium and he got an extensive teaching before the ball game today out in left field taking balls off the bat how the ball caroms off the wall down into that corner and you got a lot of room out there. Probably got a scouting report on each one of the Blue Jay hitters also. He was out there with Rob Thompson the bench coach for the Yankees of Stratford Ontario and Rob does a great job as a coach here and he's been here for a long time and Rob Chick. Frazier down into the left field corner and talked about a lot of different things and there was a lot of conversation before they started to hit the bungos and just trying to get him acclimated in a crash course of left field here at Yankee Stadium. Blue Jays made a roster move today and you see on the left of the mound that is Mike Bolsinger just back from Triple A Buffalo Ryan Zapera also throwing. Glenn Sparkman was designated for assignment after two brief outings with the Blue Jays. Clint Frazier 0 for 2 so far. Looks like he's trying to lift that ball, get it in the air. He's got some power. He was a high draft pick of the Cleveland Indians. And Yankees thought enough of him to ask for him in the Andrew Miller trade. Foul tip into the catcher's mitt. Maley hangs on for the strikeout. Frazier is 0 for 3 with a couple of strikeouts. The Yankees. This season are nine and 16 in one run games. And that's where we stand right now but they have a one run lead at two to one. You would think that that would be the other way around with those two. Big guys they have at the back end of their bullpen. Well, one of those big guys who rolled as Trapman was. Missing for about 30 games Gardner squares to bunt and bunts it foul. 
Not a bad idea right there for Gardner, solely because of the guy who's on deck, Aaron Judge. Certainly changes your thinking when yeah. Judge is hitting in the two spot. He, Gardner thinks, if I get on base, I'll get the big guy up here with two outs. And he had Josh Donaldson playing back, but he couldn't keep that ball fair. Not a bad idea. Fouled off Maley's mask. 0 oh 2, 2 outs. Got to put him away. Leaf Judge standing on deck. Fred Gardner's had a terrific season. He has doubled in three trips tonight. He now has 15 doubles, 15 home runs, and a triple. 15 home runs. He has really taken advantage of that right field area. Very short in right field. He's turned on some pitches. Gardner's career high in home runs is 17. That happened in 2014. It's 17 home runs, drove in 58. His career high in RBIs is 66. He did that in 2015. Called strike three. Gardner didn't like that. Leaves his bat at home plate. And I don't know if Jerry Meals threw him out or not, but he said something that got Gardner's attention, and it appears as though he's still in the ball game. Didn't like that call. Seven and three record against Toronto. He has put himself in line for another win. 111 pitches. It's the most pitches he's thrown since way back in May. Seven strong innings. He scatters five hits. Blue Jays got just one earned run. He walked one and struck out eight. No, when Barney picked up the only RBI with a boop single in the seventh, and now. Tanaka turns things over to a very good bullpen. Yeah, it's the second time since May the 26th that Tanaka's thrown seven innings, and he'll turn it over to the setup man and the All Star, Dylan Batanzas. 29 games. There are his numbers, big strikeout numbers. Last time out, though, he took the loss in Houston. Houston scored four runs in the eighth inning against him. But he's a big strikeout man. He's six foot eight, throws a lot of breaking balls. Jose Bautista will start things off. Bautista takes a breaking ball for a strike. Well, you're right. Batances has a great fastball, but boy, he throws that slider almost pitch after pitch. It is nasty. So you got to get ready for that fastball. Anyway, he throws a lot of those right there and at times he'll get in trouble. That's what got him in trouble in Houston. Falling behind hitters with the slider. 
Batansis was named to the All Star team via the player ballot, his fourth consecutive All Star nomination. He joins Joe DiMaggio yeah. as the second Yankee to be selected as an All Star in each of his first four full seasons in the majors. Think about that. Four years in the big leagues, four times he's been on All Star. Yeah, anytime you're mentioned in the same sentence with Joe DiMaggio as far as a Yankee record book, that's pretty impressive. One of five Yankee pitchers to be named to an All Star team in at least four straight seasons. Three one breaking ball. Yeah, and he has so much confidence. He uses that breaking ball like everybody else uses a fastball. When he needs a strike, that's the pitch you're going to get. He's going to go to it. 46,616 here, and Bautista is out on strikes. One away. This copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of Rogers Blue Jays Baseball Partnership and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of Rogers Blue Jays Baseball Partnership. We are in New York. The Yankees have a 2 1 lead. Both teams with just five hits. But the Yankees scored two runs in the first inning, and they've made that stand up. Triple digits for Batances on that first pitch to Donaldson. Yeah, he humped up 99 to get the strikeout against Jose and then throws that one 100. Batances and the guy behind him, Rolls Chapman, are almost identical, except one throws right handed and one throws left handed. You get lots of heat. Another hundred. Yeah, just after we talked about him throwing all sliders, he throws <laughs> 200 mile an hour fastballs to Donaldson. He heard you. That's why it's hard to hit in the big leagues. Now Tista one for three, a couple of strikeouts and a walk. I mean, how do you hit that? After you get two hundred mile an hour fastballs, he drops that hard breaking ball. And it'll be 89, sometimes 90 miles an hour. And with a lot of break to it. Josh looks like he's back to his leg kick, so he's feeling pretty good right now. That was a different kind of breaking ball, not a big breaker, more like a cut fastball. Two and two. Took a while for Batances to really master his craft. They used him as a starter early in his career. 101, but inside. It sounded inside. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's intimidating because he's so tall on that mound. He's six foot eight. I well, believe he'd love to get a man on for that man smoke on deck. A full count to Donaldson. One out. We're in the eighth. Brings that breaking ball on a 3 2 pitch. The Blue Jays in one run games this season, 12 and 9. Ball four. Donaldson takes a Breaking ball for ball four, and indeed that will bring smoke to the plate with a man on it. Well, Wait. right now, excuse me, Buck, they're competitors, but next week they're going to be teammates. Batansis versus Justin Smoke, and this is always fun, isn't it? Power versus power. Smoke, one of 23 first time All Stars named to the 2017 All Star game. He is one of seven first time All Stars to start. It's the first pitch breaking ball. 
seven starters are first time all stars Carlos Correa Jose Ramirez Justin Smoke Aaron Judge George Springer Corey Dickerson all in the American League and then Zach Cozart starting at shortstop for the NL. Whoa. Almost threw that one over Carter. I do not believe that Josh Donaldson is going to try and steal so I don't know if they're going to want to pay attention to him. Tansis doesn't do this very often having to throw over there. Well you know what when you really think about it he throws a lot of sliders. There's a chance he could bounce it. You want Donaldson to stay put and give smoke a chance to swing away here or do you want him to try to steal a bag get into scoring position for smoke. Tough call. Sanchez threw one into center back in the seven that contributed to the Blue Jays run. You just don't want him to, to get thrown out trying to steal because he's the the tying run the go ahead run is standing at the plate. Not running. And breaking ball away. He's not going to swing at that this year. Smoke has had such a. Great season. He has proved his improved his batting average by 80 points over his career batting average because he doesn't swing at borderline no. pitches in the past maybe that breaking ball in the dirt or the fastball up this year. Uh uh. Does he deviate from his approach and take a swing at a 3 0 pitch. That's his choice John yeah. Gibbons has said he, he likes to. Give certain guys the green light. The Smokies never swung at a 3 0 pitch. No, he doesn't like it. He took a borderline strike there, and now it's a different story at 3 1. The Yankees with a one run lead. Brown off the catcher's mitt. Breaking ball. Three and one. Breaking ball. It looked like he tried to lift that one into the air. Three and two. Donaldson at first with one out. There he goes. Fouled straight back. Donaldson was on the move. Smoke for his career has hit three home runs here at Yankee Stadium. This is his 32nd career game. They one of them, stadium. one of them was a grand slam, wasn't it? His only grand slam, yeah, right here. Donaldson on the move, throw to second is in time. A roll bounce, nice play by Chase Headley. Took the tag. And the Blue Jays are going to ask for a review. Batances and Sanchez celebrating in front of the Yankee dugout, but the Blue Jays are going to look at the video, see if they can ask for that play. The ball skipped into second. Donaldson with a leg first slide. Gibbons waiting on the video, and they're going to wave it off. So we'll go to the bottom of the eighth. The Yankees lead it. Now time for a Blue Jays Central update. Here are Jamie Campbell and Greg Zahn in the Samsung Broadcast Studio.
Presented by the all-new 2017 Honda Rebel. Live your life, love your ride. Josh Donaldson was running on a 3-2 pitch with Smoke at the plate. Smoke strikes out. There's the play at second. And he indeed is tagged out. That's Chase Headley, the third baseman, taking the throw from Sanchez. And he made a good tag on Donaldson's foot to tag him out to end the inning. The throw actually bounced, but it was fortunate. It bounced and skidded right into that glove low, and it stayed low. Ryan to pair into the ball game for the 36th time. He becomes the fourth pitcher of the night for the Blue Jays. Ball is bounced off the glove of Ryan Gowen, second hit of the night for Aaron Judge. A two hit game for Judge. Started him off with a breaking ball, and Judge, the improvement that we have seen of him as a hitter, stayed calm. He didn't panic on that breaking ball, let it break, let it get to him, and now he's going to go ahead and finish that swing. Hits a little off the end of the bat just a little bit, puts it in a good spot, and opens the eighth inning with the single. So Judge has hit in the second spot in four of the last six Yankee games, and Gary Sanchez is batting behind him. Sanchez, one for three. It's interesting to watch Joe Girardi and how he has utilized Judge over the course of this season. Aaron Judge began the season batting eighth. He hit eighth, moved to seventh in the sixth game, moved to tenth, or excuse me, moved to sixth in the tenth game, and he's just made his way up <laughs> now into the two spot. That's why Joe gets paid all that money. Smart. <laughs> he moved into the cleanup spot for the first time on May 6th. Hit fifth for just about a month and then third the first time on June 1st at Toronto. That's the first time yep. he hit third in the lineup. Hitting second now because they need some protection. And that protection is in the form of Gary Sanchez. Remember in spring training, we were talking to Joe and he was saying how he was going to hit Sanchez, then Bird, and then Holiday. He was going to go right, left, right. Making it tough for the opposition to pitch to him. Sanchez missed a month with a bicep strain. Bird's been on the DL with a bad foot. And Holiday is now on the DL with a viral infection. This ball is hit hard and over Pierce all the way to the base of the wall. They're going to stop Judge at third as Sanchez checks in with a long double to the base of the wall in left center. You know, that's why he is a good hitter and he's going to be a good power hitter for years to come because he can get fooled on pitches but still stay back enough and then just flip his wrist at that ball. He was fooled by that breaking ball. Stayed back long enough and still hit a line drive to the base of the wall for extra bases. Pierce can't come up with it because it gets out there so quickly. Sanchez is so strong and he's got a lot of bat speed. Seventh double of the season for Gary Sanchez and two and three in the batting order start the inning here in the eighth against Ryan Tapera. That'll force the infield to play in. D.D. Gregorius 0 for 2. And he walked in the first. Ryan Tapera in a jam. Up and away for ball one. The Yankees with seven hits, Blue Jays with five. Judge and Sanchez have combined to get four of those seven hits for New York. A little early for that fireworks, wasn't it? Two and oh. Judge at third, Sanchez at second, Pete Walker on the phone to the bullpen. Rip just foul, pass first. McGroyce has turned into a pretty good hitter. 
for the Yankees. Really no more as, as a glove as Mike Bolsinger has gotten up and it's starting to get loose again. He's now hitting cleanup because he puts the bat on the ball. He's become a good RBI man for him. Hit for some power last year for the Yankees. And yeah, he's hitting over 300 with runners in scoring position. Downs that one back. Gregorius is only 27 years old. He came up with the Reds in 2012, played in just eight games, and he went to Arizona, spent three years with the Diamondbacks, and this is his third season with New York. Last year, he hit 20 home runs for the first time and drove in a career high 70 runs. Two and two. Aaron Judd started it with a base hit through the left side. Gary Sanchez hit a double to the base of the wall in left center. Second and third, nobody out. Didi Gregorius with a 3 2 count. Chase Headley on deck. I, I wouldn't get into him here. I'd go for the strikeout right here. If you end up walking him, you walk him. Looking for the punch out. Tried to. Tried to backdoor that cutter or that breaking ball and just missed. So that'll load the bases. Blue Jays dealt with a bases loaded situation in the bottom of the first. With one out, Judge single, Sanchez single, and then Gregorius walked to load the bases just like this inning. And then Chase Headley was hit by a pitch to force a run in, and right behind Headley, Jacoby Ellsbury drew a bases loaded walk. That's how the Yankees scored their two runs. Look how. Who started it? The All Stars for the Yankees, Judge and Sanchez. Play's got to be at the plate. Infield is in. Any ground ball, you got to go home. Headley, one for two with a hit by pitch. Chases that high pitch. Ryan Chapera trying to pitch out of a jam. One and one. Big crowd here tonight. Monday night crowd, 46,616. Good pitch tight in on his hands. Yeah, just couldn't extend, couldn't fight that ball off. Stay right in there. You need a strikeout or a pop up. As a hitter, you got the infield in. You're not trying to guide the ball here. You're just telling yourself, hey, just hit the ball hard. Well, another good pitch right in on his hands. Ryan's made a lot of quality pitches this year. He's become a strikeout pitcher. He's come out of that bullpen throw 95 plus. Plus he's got a great slider. Stay right in on his hands. Hendley is choking up now trying to get a little bit more back control. This is up against the wall in right. Judges in to score. Here comes Sanchez right behind him to throw to the plate. Not in time. Chase Headley, a two run double here in the bottom of the eighth. The slider that he threw for strike two went down and under the bat. Looked like he tried to go back to the same pitch, but he got under it and left that ball up just a little bit. And a good major league hitter is going to hit a two-strike breaking ball. 
They go back inside. Breaking ball, you can see it just stays up, out over the plate. It doesn't get that dip, that break that you want underneath the bat. Headley's going to cash in a couple with a two-run double. Sanchez had to wait at second base to make sure that that ball was down. That's why he was a little late getting home. Still nobody out. The infield still in on the grass. Kobe Ellsbury. He is one for two. Picked up an RBI with the bases loaded walk in the first. Single double walk double for the Yankees here in the eighth. He's been a valuable pitcher for them. He's thrown 18 pitches now and hasn't gotten an out. So John Gibbons got to be thinking about maybe going to the bullpen and saving Ryan. You might need him tomorrow in the eighth inning. High breaking ball for a strike. To pair up. Making his 36th appearance. Joe Smith is on the shelf, getting closer to being activated, but still days away. Three one now. The Yankees scored two in the first. They've added two in the bottom of the eighth. Judge started both rallies. Full countdown. Torres is on deck. D.J. Gorius walked. Headley hit a two-run double. Cabrera still hasn't gotten an out here in the eighth. He strikes out Ellsbury. That's the slider he was looking yeah. for against Headley. That's exactly what I was thinking. That was the one he wanted. It was there down, and it's got a lot of movement on it. That's the one he was looking for with the bases loaded to Headley. Get on top of this one just a little bit more. You see how that ball dives down. Now you got to be alive with Ronald Torres at the plate, even with the infield drawn in. He's a threat to bunt. He can do a lot with the bat. Just keep an eye on D.D. Gregorius, the runner at third base. Little chopper, Gregorius coming home to Paris. Throw is in time, but Bailey dropped the ball. Here comes another run. Headley's going to score. As Bailey never secured the ball in his glove, Gregorius slid short of home. And Bailey couldn't field the throw from Tapera. And two runs score on the little check. Swing tapper out in front of home. Go to Para. It's just one out. Mike Bolsinger just back from Triple A Buffalo will face Chris Carter when we come back. The Yankees have scored four in the eighth.
Looked like he was going to get a second out on his swinging bunt by Ronald Torres. Heck of a play right there, and he makes a good throw to the plate. Now they had to deal with the baseball bat. And when Luke Maley can't hold on to that ball, Gregorius is going to be safe. He's got to go on that tapper. But the ball squirts away, and that allows Headley to come from second base all the way home with the fourth run of the inning. Mike Bolsinger just called back up from Triple A Buffalo into the ball game. Still just one out. Chris Carter takes a strike. The scoring on that play is fielder's choice, air charge to the catcher, Maley. And Chase Headley scores from second base as that ball got away. So there is no RBI for Torres. He's on first with a fielder's choice. This should be two. Goins to Barney back to first. It's a double play, but the Yankees put up a four spot in the bottom of the eighth to take a 6 1 lead. Fans since 1977 and the official vehicle of the Toronto Blue Jays. Well, just happened. Base is loaded. They're trying to get Headley to swing at a breaking ball. They miss their spot, and Chase Headley's going to make him pay as he doubles down into the right field corner, driving in a couple of runs for the Yankees. They would go on to score two more runs in that inning. Headley with a big hit for the Yankees is tonight's drive of the game. Headley got hit by a pitch in the first inning to pick up an RBI. He's had a three ruby night, 35 RBIs on the season for the Yankee third baseman. Heroldis Chapman was up getting ready to come in in a save situation. The Yankees scored four. It is a non save situation, but he got loose. They're not going to waste him. He's going to close out this ninth inning. Eight for ten. He's been on the disabled list. That's why he's only pitched in 20 games this season. He's one of the best in all of baseball. Look at the strikeouts per nine innings. 14 strikeouts per nine innings. That's what you're going to get from the Yankees, especially at the back end of ball games. You got a lot of arms that can strike you out. Kendris Morales will bat right-handed for the first time tonight. He was over three against Tanaka with a couple of strikeouts. Chapman missed with the first fastball at 98 miles an hour. There's a drive to right. Judge is back at the track and off his glove. Slams into the wall. Then he drops the ball again. And Morales slides into second with a leadoff double. Judge hit that ball hard. It went off his glove before he hit the wall. And it looked like it was a catchable ball. He just had it go off his glove, and it'll be a double for Morales. He's six foot seven, so he's got the reach. He gets to the ball. 
and the wall at the same time. Just missed that one and then crashes into the wall. So Kentris gets his first hit of this ball game. 16th double of the season for Morales at the leadoff double here in the ninth. Certainly changes the complexion of this ball game after the Yankees scored four in the bottom of the eighth. It was a 2 1 game at that point. Steve Pierce is 0 4 3. Well, Chapman will challenge you, and he's going to throw that fastball upstairs. You got to make him bring that ball down. Took something off and missed with that changeup ball on the strike. Masahiro Tanaka went seven innings, allowed just one run on five hits. Walked two and had a big strikeout tonight. He had eight strikeouts. Pierce is late on that fastball. 101. With that here, the Blue Jays have had success at times versus Aroldis Chapman. His ERA for his career versus the Blue Jays is over 12. Had a big comeback against him in Cincinnati a couple of years ago during interleague play while he was pitching for the Reds. Remember they have one right here also against Chapman when he's with the Yankees. They kept going the other way. If you remember that, just the right-handers were just staying on the ball just a little bit longer. Kevin Pilar has grabbed a bat. He's come out on deck. He will hit for Ezekiel Carrera, who started in center field. Chapman looks to second, throws to first for the out. One away now for a preview of what's coming up next on Sportsnet Central. Here's Carly Agro and Brendan Dunlop. Thank you very much. That's all coming up right after this game, so make sure you stay tuned. Carly and Brendan will bring you up to speed on everything that's happening around the sports world. Kevin Pilar, pinch hitting. Well, bounced on home plate. Pilar did not start in this game. He has started 77 games in center. Pilar pinch hitting just the second time this season. He's 0 for 1 as a pinch hitter, batting 249 for the season. Fastball strike. No tricks from Chapman. Here it is. Kevin is one for two in his career versus a role as Chapman. Breaking ball catches the outside corner. Hard breaking ball, hard fastball. The Yankees re-signed Chapman after they traded him to the Cubs and he finished up with the World Series champions last year. Like he's tinkering with a little something with a five run lead in the ninth inning. Normally you don't see him throw sliders. Follows that up with 102. Well it's not a bad time to put something other than that fastball in the hitter's mind. Tomorrow night might be a different story. Tomorrow afternoon you might have to pitch out of a tough situation just to give him something to think about one and two well are hanging tough against Chapman he will supply the power you just make sure you you are on time
Toronto three and four against the Yankees so far this season. Fair ball. Just inside the bag at third. Morales is going to come around third and score. Pilar will go to second with a pinch hit RBI double. Well, he was on time. It looked like another slider for some reason from Chapman and Pilar, 21 doubles now, made sure he caught that ball out in front, didn't overswing. Started it early. See that not over swinging against Chapman. He's going to supply the power. He hits it right over the bag for extra bases. It will knock in the run. And now down with Barney. Barney had an RBI single his last time up. He's one for three. Troy Tulowitzki has grabbed the bat. He's moved out on deck. He will bat for Ryan Goins. Tough bottom of the eighth inning for the Blue Jays. They gave up four runs. At the time, it was a 2 1 ball game. Ryan Tapera came in the game. Aaron Judge with a single, Sanchez with a double, DD Gregorius walked to load the bases, Chase Headley drove in two with a double. And the Yankees scored two more on a fielder's choice and an error. Yeah, that one's the one that really hurt those last two runs that came on that crazy play at the plate from 4 to 1 to 6 to 1. As usual, Blue Jays grinding it out against one of the better closers in all of baseball. Base hit through the right side. They're going to send Pilar. Judge comes up throwing, and Pilar slides in head first, and Barney picks up his second RBI of the game. You made a great point about don't try to overswing against Chapman. He will supply the power, and Pilar and Barney both. Utilize that approach. Well, you start over swinging just a little bit, and you end up being behind the fastball. You're going to be late. Your swing just gets a little bit longer. Watch Darwin Barney's approach. It's a nice, easy swing. Finds the hole on the right side. This is how they beat him. Remember, his ERA against the Blue Jays is over 12. Plates another run for the Jays. Well, if nothing more, at least you extend the inning, extend the pitch count. He's thrown 16 pitches in his non save situation. Troy Tulowitzki goes after the first pitch. Tulo pinch hitting for Ryan Goins. How many times have we seen it where a closer comes in in a non save situation, just doesn't have the juice or the adrenaline? Yeah. They come in in these situations after they think it's going to be a save situation. The team scores. Four runs and there's no save on the line and their heart rate drops off the glove of Sanchez. That's going to be another pass ball. I would think is second of the game. Yeah, both Patances and Chapman have got to be tough to catch because they throw so hard and at times they miss their spots. It is a wild pitch charged to. Chapman it went off the catcher's glove but you're right you throw 100 miles an hour you expect the ball inside and it went well off the plate outside so it is a wild pitch Barney's now in scoring position six three tying run is on deck and Blue Jays are giving everything they have. Russell Martin has come out on deck. Emptying the tank. Pilar, Tulowitzki, and Martin did not start in this game. The only extras they had on the bench. And Pilar delivered an RBI double. He scored on the Barney RBI single. Now Tulowitzki behind one and two. Tulo is over four career against Chapman.
over the screen out of play. Sooner or later, Blue Jays are going to have to win one of these games, mm -hmm. get things turned around a little bit, get some excitement going. They're coming off a one and five homestand against the Orioles and the Red Sox. Come into the Yankee Stadium and see your team give up four at the bottom of the eighth, and now you got to come back against one of the best in the business in the world as Chapman. Try to kick start the offense in the seventh inning by starting some runners. Get, get another guy on and just have a chance. Right. Bring that tying run to the plate. Barney's at second. He's two for four tonight with a couple of ribbies. Kunowitzki stays alive. Tanaka started and went seven strong innings, one run on five hits, but Hansis had a good inning of work in the eighth. Now Chapman here in the ninth. Marcus Stroman left after five innings. We have not been given an update on the reason he left, but it appeared to be some sort of situation with his pitching hand. Chapman strikes out to Lewitsky. Two away. Chapman sensing it that that tying run was on deck and he didn't want to give in to Tulowitzki, so reaches back for 101. To pick up the strikeout. Russell Martin will pinch hit for Luke Maley, the catcher. Martin is 0 for 6 against Chapman. Need a base hit. Bautista is on deck. Russell Martin just over one as a pinch hitter this season. On a strike, 101. <laughs> and Batances did the same in his inning in the eighth inning. He threw several pitches at 100 miles and higher. You know how we were talking earlier that you get a little bit closer to the pitcher when Tanaka was on the mound. I think I'd get a little farther away <laughs> with this guy. There's no batter's box anymore. That's been wiped away. And I'd get back as far as I could. This is popped up behind home and over the screen. Sanchez gives it a courtesy look just to give myself a split second. Longer. Tyler Clipper back up now. He's up to 25 pitches. Joe Girardi's thinking hey man I might need Chapman tomorrow. Yeah if he throws 30 pitches he might not be available for tomorrow. Day game tomorrow. Remember, pregame show starts at 12:30 with Jamie Campbell and Greg Zahn. One and two, two outs. Chapman working to wrestle Martin with Barney at second. Line drive caught by Headley, and that's a tough way to end it for the Blue Jays. But the Yankees had a big bottom of the eighth inning. They score four runs and win the opener. Russell Martin hits it on the line to third base, and that's how this game comes to an end. Yeah, Headley, the star of tonight's game, and he did all of his work late. Big two run double in that eighth inning that ends the game with that play, robbing Russell Martin of a hit. Tanaka, Batances, and Chapman. That's been a nice little formula for them to win a ball game, and the Blue Jays now fall 12 games under 500. Versus the American League East. The two young Yankee All Stars have a big role in tonight's win. The Aaron Judge and Gary Sanchez tandem scored four of the six Yankee runs. We'll see you tomorrow. Stay tuned. Here's Sportsnet Central.
Carly and Brendan take it away.